for the Fast Lane, Cardinals Hall of Famer and fifth member, Matt Holiday. We're hanging with Holiday on 101 ESPN. Powered by Air Alliance Team Heating and Cooling. Getting the job done quickly, correctly, 100% of the time. Let's get nasty on a Friday, a Freedom Friday. Yes, Here's the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN with Jamie Rivers and Anthony Stalter. Let's head right to the celebrity line. You're fired we're, up today, Anthony. We're joined. No, you are, buddy. We're, we're joined by our guy, Matt Holiday, who I'm sure is fired up as well since uh, Oklahoma State, I think, is like the only team left in any conference uh, in the Big 12 oh, or Pac 12. Yes. I mean, it's like it's decimated. Matt, how you feeling? <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up, Anthony. I, I'm, I'm good. I don't know that I'm excited as 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 you guys um but i'm i'm excited for the show today um <laughs> doing well yeah sounds like jamie's got something good in his system so i sure do matt he's wired today i'm matt. wired today it's gonna be a great day yeah. yeah i may just sit down and just let jamie take over <laughs> that's how fired up he is uh matt post trade deadline so we know we know that jack flaherty has moved jordan montgomery has moved jordan hicks has moved uh, certainly we're not asking you to break down any prospects because i'm sure you haven't seen you haven't uh seen the rangers farm system or the blue jays but wh- how do you think the cardinals did all things considered at the deadline well, I, I think that obviously it's to be determined, but I do think that, that when you talk about loading up on some arms that seem to be fairly close to being major league ready, at least, you know, from what I have, have uh, you know, just done just kind of a little bit of, of research, uh, seem to be uh, at least double A and, and, and some, you know, potentially could be on the cusp of, of being in the big leagues. Uh, I, I think that when you have the free agents, uh, the guys that are real close to free agency, um, you you get down to the wire. You try to make the best deal possible. Um, so I, it's always to be determined on these kind of things. But you know, from the looks on the outside, it, it looks like they were able to get a, a group of guys that if they you know if there's six or eight of them, if if two of them turn out to be good major league pitchers uh, for guys that 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 you know were going to be free agents anyway, I, I think you feel good about it. Um, so we'll see. I mean, that's, it's, it's always, um, those things have to play out, uh, in the next few years. Uh, but I, I, I think they did pretty well. I know the Prieto guy pretty well and, and, and the Oriole system from the Flaherty deal that Jackson, uh, knows pretty well from, from spring training and, and is pretty familiar with him. And I think he can really hit. And, and so I think he, they might've have a, a treasure in, in him that as, as an infielder that, that has a, as a, as a knack for, for hits. Um, so uh, I think all in all, um, you know, if you have to trade those guys, you, you, you get what you can. And, and, uh, and like I said, you, you hope that, that it's scouting and, and uh, the, the background and, and the checks that you do to try to get some, some good guys in return, you, you, you hope that you, uh, you hit on them. Matt, were you ever on a team, I can't remember, that were, that were sellers at the deadline? Yeah, I mean, I played my first, uh, you know, my first few years with the Rockies. We weren't good, um, and so we we you know it was kind of that situation where veterans were, um, you know, if, if they could get something for them, you know, they were they were doing it. But um, after I got with the Cardinals, we never really were. Um, so so not a lot of that for for me outside of my first few years in Colorado. But it's uh, you know, it's it's an interesting time because you know sometimes a lot of young guys get opportunity. And it brings some energy because, you know, young guys are, are, are saying, hey, look, this is my opportunity. I'm going to go out there and make the most of it. And they get, they're they excited and they're, they're coming to the clubhouse. And sometimes you get a little bit of a pick-me-up and with, with from the, the young blood that's infused into the, into the clubhouse and the, and the want to and the, hey, this is my chance to go make a name for myself. And, and a lot of times you end up playing pretty good baseball down the stretch because uh, you got some guys that are, that are playing for – for their lives, so to speak. So um, it'll be interesting to, to see how the, the Cardinals play down the stretch. But um, I, I still think that, you know, if they're in a, in a position where, where next year they can get good again. So um, a lot of times you have teams that are dismantling, uh, you know, with the, the Mets even sort of on record as saying that they're not really looking to compete until 25. Um, and, and so uh, I, I think that that, that, can be, that can be demoralizing. But I think the Cardinals are, are – uh, 
are in position to bounce back next year. And so uh, it'll be interesting to see if some of these young guys get a chance. Yeah, the young guys always do bring energy. I guess where I'm going to go next with it is, you know, how do guys like Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt approach the rest of the season? Because yeah. these are guys that came to the Cardinals wanting yeah. to win, Nolan especially, on record, of tired of losing, wanting to win. Yeah. And here they are as sellers. You know, they got a good chunk of the season left. How do they approach that? Yeah, I mean, you're talking about two very prideful uh, pros. And so you're talking about guys that take a lot of pride in, in their personal performance, their impact on the team, a chance to mentor younger players. So I, I think that while there, there may be a little bit of a sense of, you know, this is frustrating that, that we're already sort of throwing in the, in the white towel uh, this early, I, I think you're talking about two absolute stud humans, stud teammates, like um, – professionals that, that, that take a ton of pride in their routine and going out on the field and playing at the highest level, uh, that take it home with them when they don't have a good game, no matter if, you know, what the circumstances around them is. Uh, so I, I, I don't worry about those guys. Like I, like I said, I, I'm sure that it was a little bit of a punch in the gut to sort of realize that maybe this season is, is, um, you know, is, is kind of out the window and, and, uh, but, there is a, a, a professionalism, Jamie, as you know, that, that you, you take that field. Like, if you're not all in and, and, and emotionally invested in, in that game, uh, it'll embarrass you. I mean, there's, there's, this is the, the, the top of the top. And if you're not locked in, uh, these guys are too prideful to get embarrassed. So I'm not really worried about much of a drop off from a, you know, an effort or an emotional, um, you know, sort of engagement with them. Cardinals Hall of Famer, World Series champion, Matt Holiday joining us right now on the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN, Jamie Rivers, Anthony Stolzer. Matt, can I, there's some free agent pitchers that are going to hit the open market in the offseason. Of course, the Cardinals are going to be concentrating on pitching. Can I throw some names out at you and see if you, you face sure. them at one point? Give us a scouting report. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Nola. I like Aaron Nola a lot. I mean, I, I think he's he would be a good fit. Um He's, you know, he got a good chance in the postseason last year. He's very tough on righties, um, and and you know has had had success, you know, at, at the highest level. And I think, you know, in the postseason last year, he, he did really well. So to me, he would be he would be high on on my list if, if I'm Mo of, of somebody that I'm very interested in, and and uh, and somebody that you know you, you would help you uh, move back towards, you know, the the. That you know, winning the division next year, so I would be, I would be very, very much interested in him. Did you ever get to face uh, Blake Snell? I never faced Blake Snell, but he's another guy um, that you know. I, I don't know him personally, um, as far as you know, his makeups like. But if you know, on paper, you know, you're talking about a six foot six inch lefty that's pitching in the upper nineties uh, that that has a changeup and a curveball or slider. Uh, so another guy um, that, you know, you're talking about inserting uh, into your rotation, the front of your rotation that's finished. I don't know. Help me. He didn't win a Cy Young, but he was close. I, he almost won a World Series if, had, they, had, they he, not, had they not pulled him. Oh, yeah. The analytics told us I that. Don't think, I don't think he won a Cy Young, Matt. He, he, I think oh, he, he finished did. in the top. No, he did. 2018. Did yep. 2018. Yeah, so you're talking about a Cy Young winner. Um and you're, and you're talking about uh, another guy for me that I don't know what the contract, you know, ends up looking like, but, you know, for me, like you tell me Nola and, and Snell, uh, I, I do think those are, those are impact impact makers that, that, you know, they, that they allow for the front of the rotation and, and uh, you know, guys to settle neat, underneath those guys. And, and, you know, every time they take the mound, you like your chances of winning. So, um, for me, another guy that I would be very interested in and, and uh, you know, is a workhorse and, and somebody that, you know, you don't really he, – he just looks to me like he's effort effortless 95 and plus and, you know, doesn't seem like an injury risk. Um, if, as far as I remember, he's, he's had a, a healthy arm, um, which I think you worry about a little bit in free agency, giving a guy – a six or seven, five, six, seven year deal. You know, he, he seems like a, a guy built for a lot of innings. 
So um, I, I'm another guy, those two you mentioned to me, I would be high on my list of, of somebody to help get this thing turned around. All right, I won't throw the whole list at you, but some non, uh, non-ace non types. Well, but I got one more go ahead. for him. I know Matt never faced this guy, um, and I've been, I've been on board with this for quite some time now. But uh, your thoughts on the Cardinals getting Shohei Otani? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I mean, look, I've been on that on that train for a while. Uh, if every team in the league doesn't at least kick the tires, I think they're crazy. So, um, you talk about getting a three hole and an ace pitcher in one player. No kidding. Uh, plus the Asian market, uh, you know, the interest from the the whole Asian continent uh, as far as you know value goes and, and interest and TV rights and all that stuff. Uh, I gotta think that every every owner is is got to at least uh, dip his toes in the water, don't you think? Yeah. So that's actually kind of what I was thinking. Like all jokes aside, now uh, the, the Cardinals ownership group here, obviously the Dewitts, are tremendous owners. But like, is this something that they'd even think about? Because it's so it feels like it's so out of character almost to go that high of a number. But when you break it down and you're getting two Hall of Famer players mm-hmm. basically the hitter and the pitcher yep. like i almost feel like they might dip their toes in the water i, I mean like i said I, I think that when you look at uh just ticket sales and merchandise sales and tv stuff and the, like you know just the everything that he brings to the table i mean i i just don't know what dollars don't make sense like as far as if an owner looks at the contract and says well this is this is out of our range. I, I just don't know what that number would be to where you don't make it back and, and all the things that I mentioned. So um, I know, you know, that the, you know, the big markets, I don't know if he has a preference of the West coast. Um, I don't know any insight on, on what Shohei is looking for, but gosh, like I said, I can't imagine any owner that doesn't say, man, I, I think, the value this guy brings to an organization on a, on a couple of fronts uh, would 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 pay for it pay for itself no matter you know how big this deal gets. Matt, just two other names that I've kind of referenced. They're having good seasons or good you know good stretches this year uh, that I think would be interesting. Just middle middle of the rotation or maybe even number two guys, Sonny Gray and mm-hmm. Kenta Maeda. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts on those guys? Yeah, I mean, I know Sonny. I played with with Sonny in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, my brother coached him at at, uh, at Vanderbilt. Um, I like Sonny a lot. I, again, when you start talking about like inning beaters and and trying to get back into a position to win the division, if you could pull off maybe one of those top two guys and then one of these these other you know sort of two or three type pitchers. Um, I, I think you're auto, like you, you reinsert yourself as as right up in, in the top of the division and, mm-hmm. and, a, and a team that, that can compete. So uh, I like both those guys. I know Maeda, um, you know, is and they're both kind of smaller in stature, which I think you know as they get older, um, you know, you, you start to maybe study and, and how long the contract you know is, is always going to be uh, a factor um, because they are they are little guys. I mean let's be honest like um but both can really pitch um and and both have had had success at at a very high level so um you know depending on the length of contract i'd be very interested in in trying to pick up one of those top two you mentioned and then maybe one of these top two these two guys that you just mentioned to me sure um i think you add those into um you know a resurgent steven matz who seems to be um pitching really well and and michaelis and and um, you know, you, you might have, you know, you're back to having a rotation that, that uh, on paper gets you back in the mix. Matt, great stuff as always. We appreciate you. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you again next week. All right, guys. Go get them today, Jamie. You sound like you're ready. <laughs> you got it, buddy. I appreciate it. Have a great weekend. All right. See you guys. See you, man. That's Matt Holiday, World Series champ, Cardinals, Hall of Famer. Great stuff. I always love picking his brain about guys that he's he's faced he's faced he's faced a lot of guys oh, yeah. over his career uh never had an opportunity to face snell but boy he had the he had the breakdown he had the the lefty easy Anthony, easy delivery for a second okay well and matt holiday's a coach helps out at ok state mm-hmm. look at his children look at him 
as far as the knowledge and being able to pick up things and watching a picture and being able to break things down. Like, yeah. No doubt. That's a direct tell. Like, yes, his kids are, they're Matt Holiday's kids, but not every kid that's got a Hall of Famer dad is a Hall of Famer player. Right. The dad obviously has some input in this. Matt Holiday's able to, you know, coach kids or to at least, you know, the lingo or, or get the information to his own kids and the kids he coaches. I mean, it's incredible the way he breaks things down. No doubt. That's Jamie Rivers. I'm Anthony Stalter. It's the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. 216, your time check is brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. Lineup is out for tonight's game. Oh. So we'll play the lineup game. Try not to butcher it next on 101 ESPN. two days we have made an absolute mockery of the lineup game in fairness to us holly's come out with some interesting ones we we didn't see some of the days off like yesterday with arnado being off Contreras was off that's too bad he wasn't available off the bench 
with the uh, tying run. Okay, can we, can we get into this? No, we'll get into it later. No, Anthony, save it because I have a lot to say. Save it. Play the lineup games. Just focus on what we're supposed to be doing right now. Uh, the only thing I'll say Not, is if you want, yeah. the, if you want the Mott sauce to be in those situations next year and produce... You got you to gotta give him the opportunity. That's exactly what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jamie. Just wait. Just wait. DJ Dirty Elbows over there. Well, he, he was at the oh, game. He was upset. Oh, oh, oh. He was upset. Oh, Who's on the bump for the Twins? Chris Flexen, a right-hander. Oh, yeah. That's Rockies, too, by the way. Oh, new, oh, new that's series. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, they're just so you. good and all rolls together, you. Anthony, you know? Jamie, I don't blame you for <laughs> not remembering that. Uh, it was a four game series. Uh, no. No three games. I, obviously it's not, Anthony. <laughs> all right. Usually you start a new one on Friday. Right, why don't you grind it up? Start it up by grinding. All right. Show us Lars Taylor Tetsui New Bar. Yes. That's scumbag. Nice effort no, last night. This guy's a scumbag. <laughs> this next guy is a scumbag. Sorry, sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Lars's performance last night <laughs> was scumbag esque. Yeah. Not Lars himself. He's a great guy. Well, and I mean, same, the same thing, thing with Goldie. Yeah, the performance. Let's just talk about the performance. Let's not get personal. Listen, here's the thing Paul Goldschmidt eclipses me in absolutely every single category. Same. Every category. He's a nice guy. He's in great shape. He's a successful baseball player. He's got lots of money. Doesn't drink. He doesn't drink. Yeah. He's probably, you know, gives time here. Or mm-hmm. Honestly, Man. I I am a scumbag next to him. Uh, you and I, I won't. I, hey, I won't let you go down in flames like that, brother. Yeah. I'm a scumbag too. Oh, I know you are. Yeah. Um, That's why we get along so well. Uh, truly. Now, Goldie wants nothing to do with us. And he wants nothing to do with hitting the baseball the last couple of games. <laughs> Okay, and that's what pisses me off because I've had him. I've doubled down on this guy twice. You didn't even want to yesterday. I didn't want to. I, by default, I was like, fine, give me Goldie. And he goes out there and go uh, for gopher again. You see who had a big game, too. Yeah, the Burley Burleson. You said, ah, he's not going to hit another home run <laughs> in as many days. No way he's going back Screw to back. On, son of a. All right, show us. Paul Goldschmidt. Okay, so yesterday it wound up being Jordan Walker because of the injury. To, or whatever no, happened no, with no, no. Gorman. <clears throat> oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it was, yeah, you're right. Walker was clean up, then he got moved up. You're blah, right. Blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. So, originally it was Nolan Gorman here. Mm-hmm. Are we going back to Gorman? I think it's, I, unless he's hurt. It doesn't seem like he was hurt. He's just getting him off his feet, apparently. At the last second? Yeah, you're right, Anthony. Maybe he is hurt. I don't know. If Gorman's in the lineup, I think he's here. If he's in the lineup, he's here for sure. So should we test Gorman first? Put your toes in. Andy. Okay, let's do it. Show us Storman. Gorman. Nolan Gorman. Oh, it is. He's back in. Okay. Good call, Anthony. <laughs> I heard the ding and it didn't even register for me. Oh, I saw it not register. Yeah, there was blank face here. Totally. All right, this is uh, your guy here now, Anthony. Show us. Nolan Arnado. Nolan is a security <laughs> guard at the lumber yard. <laughs> Okay. Now, I think this Big Willie style is Big Willie style. Show us Big Willie Contreras. This one goes out to all the Big Willies. Wilson, are you naked? No, Tim, I'm wearing a hat. <laughs> That's so good. All right, is this uh, Jordan Walker? Is this Walk It Like It's Hot? Yeah. Yes. Are you, wait, hang on. Are you sure? I don't. He's going to, unless he's not in the lineup. Tyler O'Neill was not in the lineup last That's night. That's why either. I think this is Tyler O'Neill. Oh, okay. Well, let's go Tyler O'Neill. I th- I, that works for me. Okay. Show us Tyler O'Neill. My fingers hurt. <laughs> oh, well, now your back's going to hurt because you just pull landscaping duty. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. Now okay, this. so is Walker out of the lineup or is Walker seventh? I think Walker is in the lineup. Okay. I think Carlson is out. Okay, That's so my thoughts. Walker here. Sure. Walk it, show us walk it like it's hot. All right. So let's... Jamie, we got a perfect game going here, well, so we let's, got, let's, uh, not, let's not ruin this. We got the Furminator and we got the Matsas. <laughs> what do we need? Well, Furminator's we, we have Edmund, out. too. Huh? We have Edmund. Yeah. Furminator's not playing. That was a one-off. Right. But Matsas... I mean, how do you take that guy out of the lineup? Oh, there's a lot of reasons yeah. for that. So let's go through the positions here. Gorman, is he DHing today? 
Like, if he's nursing anything at all, is he the DH? I can see that. If so, then you'll need a second baseman. And that tells me it's probably Mott Sauce over Fermin and Edmund right. shortstop. Right? Yeah. So I think so be- Edmund's one of these guys. Yeah, I agree. Okay, but if Gorman, if Gorman is the second baseman, then you don't have a DH, correct? Correct. So then Kisner could be in. Either Kisner's in or somebody like Burleson, who had a good game oh, yesterday. Yeah, big bad Burley. Burley's been knocking the snot out of the ball, and Ollie just talked about getting, getting him, him more playing time. More playing, more at bats. Jamie, I wonder if Gorman's at second. I think you're which right. Which would free up a DH spot. Yeah. And it's Burleson. It's and Burleson, then Edmund. Edmund. Yep. You go good with it. that? Yes. All go right. For it. Show us Alec Burleson. Some lefty on lefty magic from a guy like Nolan Gorman who's hitting near you in the lineup. What? What? I just want to drink beer with Alec Burleson, honestly, and play softball. He yeah. looks like the greatest softball He'd be player fantastic. ever. He would be the guy that just comes up, hits the home run, hits first, walks off every time. Just <laughs> home run, first, walks off. Just a stud. Uh, Edmund? Tommy Edmund, please. Show us Tommy Edmund. Tommy likey. Tommy want wingy. <laughs> Nice job, Jamie. Did we just run the table? We ran the table. Nice. And I feel like we're somewhat intelligent about that. Not bad. I'll give it time. All right. All right, run it, Marshy. All right. It's amazing what happens when you have a competent lineup put together. Ooh, shot at Ollie. Well, or the analytics team, or Mo. Or all. Or all of them. Who cares? Leading off in center field, Lars Taylor Tetsui Nupar. Batting second, first baseman, Paul Goldschmidt. Batting third, second baseman, Nolan Gorman. Your cleanup hitter, third baseman, Nolan Arnato. Batting fifth, the catcher, Wilson Contreras. Batting sixth in left field, Tyler O'Neill. Batting seventh in right field, Jordan Walker. Batting eighth, the DH, Alec Burleson. And batting ninth, the shark stop, Tommy Edman. <laughs> All right. So, nobody got one last night. Nobody hit Burleson. No. no. Jamie almost did. I, I she counted have. them out. I did. I did. Uh, I have to wear that. Jamie, have you gone first in a while? I don't think you have. Go ahead. All right. Uh, I'm, I know where I'm not headed. Uh, okay. Nolan Gorman, please. Okay. Sorry, Goldie. So, you took Gorman. Marsh, go ahead. I'm going to take Paul Goldschmidt just uh, to spite Jamie Rivers he's today. He's hit three home runs for you tonight. Too. I hope Watch so. This. They'll all probably be after some <laughs> other person. <laughs> after Newt though. leads off. Yeah, after one. Newt leads off, which Anthony's <laughs> probably going to take Newt. Oh, I was. I was, but I like hating myself so i'll watch new bar hit the home run i'm gonna take jordan walker oh wow oh. i'm gonna take jordan walker walk it like it's hot i i never i never branch out so you yeah. know I'm, I'm always like arnado goldie newt yeah today's free day today is freedom friday, freedom friday freedom friday according to jamie so that's right well uh, yeah we're gonna go with jordan walker today all right it's fast nine on 101 espn how can the cardinals get fans to care in this last stretch i mean just one thing, really, honestly. I'll tell you what that is next. I want to win you a span.
101 ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The cards fall to the Twins last night by final score of five to three. They dropped two of three against Minnesota. Adam Wainwright on the mound for the Redbirds tonight, 7:15, going up against the Rockies as Wainwright looks for win number 199. Once again, cards Rockies 7:15 first pitch. In college football news, Oregon and Washington are set to join the Big Ten in 2024. We'll dive into that later in the show, so stay tuned. Tuned. I'm Andrew Marsh, and the Sports Center update is driven by Johnny Londoff. Funny roads and shop 24 7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? So. When we've gone on rants before, me specifically, I guess, um, <clears throat> talking about how, you know, people will kind of blame us for not holding Mo accountable or holding the Cardinals accountable, and we need to basically ha- use our position of authority to send a message to the Cardinals. Yeah. One of the things that I have said is you hold more weight than we do as fans. You hold way more weight. You not showing up, not paying for a seat, not paying for parking, not paying for beer, not paying for hot dogs and nachos and all that stuff. You hold more weight than we do. I know it doesn't feel like it, but Jamie and I have expressed how disappointed and frustrating it has been, not only this season, but in years past, with the expectations being as high as, as possible, because this is the greatest baseball town in America, we have talked about how frustrating it is for this team to fall short of expectations. It doesn't matter. You not going to the ballpark <clears throat> matters. The DeWitts will see that. Mo will see that. They don't care what we say. Okay? So, Marsh going to the game last night. Way to go, Marshy. <laughs> yeah. I thought you signed the petition the other day. What are you doing? Ah, what are you going to do? <laughs> Marsh, you went to the game last night. I did, yeah. And some of your some of your notes about the game were pretty striking. Go ahead. It was one of the most disappointing atmospheres I've ever experienced at Bush Stadium wow. in terms of the fan like engagement, how loud it was fans cheering granted they gave the fans nothing to cheer about yesterday i think the one time fans really did cheer and it was the loudest is when drew verhagen finally threw a strike after walking it <laughs> walking a runner in <laughs> so a little bit of a mock cheer a little it bronx was a bit of a cheer. mock yeah it was definitely a bronx bronx jeer yeah so um yeah i it, it's definitely interesting because about a week ago i went to the city sc game and even though they lost in that in that match uh, the atmosphere, it was great. It was a great atmosphere, and everyone, even though they're down 4 nil, you still have the chance going. It was just a great atmosphere to be a part of. Um, it, it, I just can't say the same about Bush Stadium last night. It just mm-hmm. wasn't fun. And, and I, again, I don't expect the fans to be excited about this ball club. They, they give yeah. you nothing to be excited about, especially when you don't have Arnato playing. You don't have Contreras playing. You have Goldschmidt. He's not playing the field. He's the DH, but couldn't get a hit last night. O'Neal, who's been hitting the ball well, he wasn't playing. And at the end of the game, you're down by two runs. You have the tying run at the plate, and Taylor Motter is taking hacks. Why? You, you, you say, okay, I understand the season is lost, but you're still trying to put a competitive ball club out there and win games for the fans. How are you telling – what are you telling the fans by doing that? So here's where I'm going to go with this is – I think it was last year where Doug Armstrong said in one of his press conferences that they owe it to the fans to be competitive, Mm -hmm. and he owed it to ownership to try and get into the playoffs every year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, last year was not a year where they were going to get into the playoffs, but they still went and got some exciting players and finished hard and did all that. My point is not their success. My point is the recognition of the moment, okay? 
So to your point, Marshy, when Taylor Motter steps into the batter's box last night, and let's just, I'm going to put this out there. <clears throat> Taylor Motter takes a lot of crap. Uh, none of it is his fault. No. He's a guy that his dream is to play in the majors, and he's living his best life right now, getting an opportunity to play baseball. Mm -hmm. So if Taylor Motter's listening, and, and like we're not, we're not upset with you, the right. individual. The problem is that you owe it to your fans mm -hmm. to go for it. And what I mean by go for it is at the end of the game, Motter's up. You got a guy on first base. You've got three guys that can touch seats easily. Contreras, O'Neill, Arenado. One of those guys is going up there for me. Why? Because I owe it to the fans to try and come back in this game. I can figure out the lineup after that, who, who's going to replace Modder, where on the field, and shift, shift the puzzle pieces around is mm -hmm. fine. But, like, what a moment. Mm -hmm. You're in a losing season. You've liquidated all your veteran or your free agent players. And let's just say Contreras steps up there and hits a ding-dong Johnson and ties the game at five. Something to go to the ballpark for. Yeah. He gave them mm -hmm. nothing. Taylor Modder is now being criticized today because it, Ollie or Mo or whoever made the decision to not disturb one of their guys who were getting off their feet for the day. Mm -hmm. I, in, a, in, a, in a losing season. That doesn't, you're not, you're not thinking about the fans at that point. Mm -hmm. You're not. You're mm -hmm. not realizing what's going on. Like, even as a manager, I would be like, you know what? You never know. Hey, Willie, hey, Nolan, grab a bat. You think Arenado's going to say, no, I don't want to go swing a bat? No. Like, mm -hmm. I just, I didn't get that moment at all. Yeah, no, I think it's I think it's a great point. Now, if Taylor Motter, sorry, Anthony, mm -hmm. if Taylor Motter is Mason Wynn or Jordan Walker, mm -hmm. I'm leaving him in there. That's different. 100%. Yeah. I'm leaving him in That's, there because a young this guy. is a moment yes, for you. right. I agree. Okay, but it's Taylor Motter. He's 29 years old, a journeyman in baseball. Yeah. He's a utility player. Like, dude, you've got three guys on the bench that can absolutely murder right. the baseball. Yeah. Jamie, I think it's a it's a great point. And Marsh, I'm glad you you were willing to share that because oh, yeah, I'm sure everybody else in the in the ballpark felt the same way last night. Mm -hmm. The Cardinals are, have become so predictable to the point that I I, I was talking early in the season about you don't want apathy to set in. Apathy is absolutely set in. You want anger still. You want somebody to be angry. You want somebody to be – because when they're angry, at least they're passionate about it. At least they're showing you, you you have ticked them off. If it's apathy, they don't care now. They have checked out. You have lost their attention. You have lost their desire. You have lost their passion. And, and this Cardinals fan base, rightfully so – is apathetic now <clears throat> and and yet what you do to your guys's point it's kind of like an actor who made it big and he just does the same role every yeah. time every movie so you get to the point where you're like even though i like this actor mm -hmm. i have seen this movie the rock <laughs> the rock sure He's the same character in every yeah. movie do i do i really want to <laughs> see do i really want to see the rock play this exact role again or or am I going to go do something else so the cardinals are basically saying we can just make any movie and we make it the same and you'll still show up and this fan base this season has said no we won't and good for you mm -hmm. good for you as a cardinals fan we get a great text from the 314 uh going back to the Taylor Motter situation and again a lot of support for Taylor Motter on the text line as it should be, you know, mm -hmm. it's not, it's yeah, not him. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but this from the great job, Jamie pointing that out too. Yeah. I mean, we, we have fun and whatnot, but this is a guy that's trying to earn a living and he's doing everything. He's trying his hardest. Man. Good call. Uh, anyways, from three, one, four, if you're taking Jordan Walker out every game for defense, then you sure as hell should have pinch hit for modern. That's a great point. Mm hmm. If yeah. Ollie's whole reasoning, That's and I know he talks point. to the media, if his whole reasoning of, you know, I've got Paul, I've got to look Paul Goldschmidt in the face. I can look at Nolan Arnado, and if I'm not taking a guy out for defense purposes when we got a lead at the end of a game, yeah. you know, that I'm doing them wrong. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Good call. That's a great text. Well, and the fans, Anthony, you always bring up the NBA sitting players yeah. doing the load management thing. Right. We've gotten a lot of that from the big stars this season. A little, like... So much that it, it seems like they've kind of overdone it, in mm -hmm. my opinion, to save these guys for the back half of the season. For what? 
For what now? Yeah. Why, why are you saving them? Right. <clears throat> the season's over. Yeah, it, initially, you're right. Initially, initially. If, if you wanted to save, because you don't want those guys to wear down in September. For sure. Or October, excuse me. So you start saving them a little bit throughout. Okay, great. But to have them all out in the same game. Right. Some people are traveling. I saw someone on the text line said they had friends that traveled three hours to go to the game to stay overnight to watch the Furminator and, and Taylor Motter play. Right. And Alec right. Burleson play first base. Burley had a hell of a no, catch, though. No, he did. Though. He did. And <laughs> but, he did. And he had, a, yeah. he had a nice hit, too. The point yeah, is still over the fence. made. But you also think about some of the, and I just kind of thought about this, too. What about some of the Twins fans? That, and I, we don't really care about them all that much. But the opposing fans that You come, care about that baseball heaven moniker, though, you don't do. you? You absolutely do. And you the, want that. You want those opposing fans to come into Bush Stadium and think, wow, this place is everything that the right. national media has said it was mm -hmm. this place is awesome last night if you were a fan of minnesota eh, why do i need to come to st louis this place ain't right. that special and 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 marsh i know you're i know you're, you're making this point that's not the fans no that's 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 the team 100 and i just want to clarify that so the people are like For why sure. would i show up you absolutely Mar what marsh is saying is it, it it's the drumbeat of the segment mm -hmm. which is your fans or your stockholders and to Jamie's, you're not you're not showing them mm -hmm. that you care. With efforts like you had this year, and the losing seasons happen, but what are you going to do about it? Because you still have X amount of games. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do about that? This team looks like I mean it is. We are past weekend at Bernie's. Those those two guys have left Bernie in the sewers now. <laughs> Bernie's no longer dancing to Jamaican beats. Don't, okay. Don't spoil the movie for me. I still well, haven't seen it. That's the second one. <laughs> you got two to look forward to. <laughs> it's Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. Have we seen enough of Matthew Libertor? That's next on 101 ESPN.
say it was a positive outing. Uh, got beat on a, two homers. But at the end of the day, I thought he pitched well. Uh, when you look at the outing and then kind of next step um, for him, landing that curveball is a big deal for him. I thought Velo was fine today. Uh, the sinker, the four-seamer played, not a ton of swing and miss, but that, that's what he gets with that curveball and being able to land it and steal strikes with it, but also throw it for chase later in counts is going to be what he needs to do, and that, that's kind of next step. So that's Cardinals manager Ali Marmel talking about Matthew Libertor's performance last night. Jamie Rivers, Anthony Stalter. Libertor allowed five runs over five and two-thirds innings last night in that loss to the Twins. I, he, he Honestly, guys, I, I thought he was okay. He was fine. He was fine, he was exactly. Fine. He, he left a couple of watermelons out there. They got smashed, and that was pretty much the game. Yeah. Gave the Twins a four-run lead. That's it. They went on to, what, walk, walk in the Twins' fifth run? No, he didn't. Verhagen walked it in. Okay, so but it was his run. His run. Verhagen gets, did it. That's right. He gets Verhagen the run did credited, it. But Verhagen's There's the one who walked. There you go. Okay. Either way, one strikeout didn't generate a ton of swing swinging strikes. ERA's up to six nine three. Have we seen enough of Matthew Libertor to make any sort of proclamation? Yes and no is the way I would say that. I don't think that. I don't think that this is the you know that what he's done this year, Jamie is like the end-all, be-all, right, Libertor off. But he also hasn't shown you enough to give you confidence that he should be the leader of the pack for that last remaining spot next year. Does that make sense? Yeah, I never had him as the leader of the pack anyways. Right, but I'm saying he hasn't, he hasn't, he, he's had the opportunity to, to grab it, Ish. and he just hasn't. Ish. He's pitched what? Nine, he started nine games. Hey, when Stephen Matz went to the bullpen, he had every opportunity. Well, I know, but he still only pitched nine games. Started nine games. What do you do in those nine games? Well, he's been all over the place. He's fine. It's fine. So, but here's my point: I'm, not, I'm just not ready to say anything negative yet. But I'm also not giving him the endorsement either. I think you and I are saying the same thing, just yeah. in different ways. The the best situation the Cardinals can have is to go get two starters. High end, hopefully, another guy to fill out the rotation somewhere in the middle, and then let all of the extra arms fight it out. Mm -hmm. Libertor, Hudson, McGreevy, Graceffo, Hentz, whoever's ready for it. Any of these new guys they just acquired that are, like, right on the cusp, there's no gimmies. You can't afford any gimmies anymore with, with this rotation. You, you got taken out behind the woodshed this year primarily because of your pitching, mm -hmm. starting and bullpen guys. No doubt. So when I look at Matthew Libertor, I don't just anoint him the fifth starter. No way. You're going to compete, and whoever can compete and be the most consistent will get the opportunity. And even once you get the opportunity, it's not yours to keep. It's yours to earn. Yeah. That's the way I'm, that's the way I'm approaching this with Matthew Libertor. I, I agree. He's, I guess with his performance this year, he hasn't changed any minds. Would, would that be fair? He he hasn't changed any mind. He hasn't he hasn't done anything where you're like, man, he's he's an intriguing player for next year. No, no, he hasn't done it. The only time he did that was his first start against the Brewers. Yeah, he came up and shoved, and we're like, whoa, right? This, this is, is a, a new guy. This is a different Libertor. Turns out, it was the same Brewers that had struggled against lefties all season Twins long. Are supposed to struggle against lefties too. Yeah, thanks. Where are you on that one, Marsh? Yeah, thanks a lot there, DJ Marshy. I'm not a Twins fan. I know, but you had said the twins struggle against lefties. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, that's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what happened last night. Well, no. they still. I mean, I, I'll be completely honest. Game starts at six forty-five. We get off here at six o'clock, mm -hmm. so I was a tad bit late to the game, just getting down there just from the early start. It was four nothing before I got my seat. That's a good feeling, isn't it? When you're did you have a beer at least? Did you have a beer Absolutely. in the end when you sat down? I had a beer and a hot dog. There you As go. A, All it right. was one of those. Do I get to my seat first, yeah. then go get the beer no, and food? No, just get the. Yeah. It was like it's four nothing already. I'm like, let's just get the food. Good let's for go you. Get the beers. Sometimes you have to manuf manufacture your own happiness. Yes. And I feel like you manufactured <laughs> your own happiness there. Absolutely. You, you knew the Cardinals weren't going to deliver said happiness, but no. that beer and that dog. Pff, well, I did not go to set. that game last night intending on w seeing a winner. Yeah. If that makes sense. I was there. It <laughs> definitely <laughs> don't make sense. When you showed yeah. up, you're like, yep, I'm right. Yeah. Yep. So, All right. whatever. That's what's, what's what I heard. I heard they weren't good against lefties. Either way, 
Either way, I to me, I think uh, I would already be transitioning to okay. Let's see what this kid can do in the pen. Let's see. Let's see what he looks like left left hander out of the pen. I'm not saying right now. Yeah. Like right this second. If you want to give him a couple more starts, okay. But Jamie, you you've kept, you keep saying, and I agree with you. Why don't you go? Why don't you give McGreevy an opportunity, or why don't you give uh, Graceffo an opportunity? Well, one of those arms you just acquired. Yeah. Whatever. I don't. know. Whoever yeah. you think is the most ready Who's for an ready? opportunity. Who's like, ready for an opportunity? Come on. Why don't you do that in September? So if you want to give Libertor like two or three more starts, okay. But if he keeps doing this, if it's five and two thirds, four and four runs, five runs, one K, see what he's got in the pen. See if he can be one of those guys that gives you two innings out of the pen. Yeah. A la Andrew Miller. So I, I you know, to me, that's kind of where my mind is going at this point, but. Don't know if the Cardinals are thinking that same way. Would you package Brendan Donovan for a Mariners pitcher? That came up today in the office. We'll talk about it next on 101 ESPN.
I would trade Brennan Donovan. And if it, if it had to be a package with Donovan and O'Neal, I would do that. You know, there are definitely some packages that I would put together. Gorman does what I love, which is hit the crap out of the ball. It, it's just uh, it, what makes their, their pitching development so great is that they're all so different. Um, if, if you want to bet on a fastball, then you bet on Logan Gilbert. If you uh, want to bet on an elite breaking ball, that's Brian Wu. I think my favorite actually might be Bryce Miller. So that was Eno Saris of The Athletic, who was on with BK and Ferrario earlier today. And, and you heard what he said. He'd package Brendan Donovan and maybe Tyler O'Neill to get one of those Mariners pitchers. And he mentioned Brian Wu. He mentioned Logan Gilbert. He mentioned Miller. Um, yeah, I to me, Jamie, we kind of had this conversation yesterday. I, I, if I'm choosing one of those guys, it would it actually be Tommy Edmond. If I had to give up one of those, one of those outfielders slash infielders to not only free up some of the congestion that you have in the outfield, but also to get a pitcher pitcher you so desperately need. I don't know if Tommy Edmond. I mean, it's it's going to have to be Donovan and or Edmund and yeah but I, I would do that if if I could get a major league pitcher that's young cost controlled and any one of those guys from Seattle would be great so you're the Cardinals <clears throat> let's say put together a package for me right now pick a pitcher mm -hmm. and put together a package for me okay um I think Logan Gilbert Logan Gilbert would be too much so, why don't we go with Brian Wu? Okay. Katie's brother. Not Katie's brother, no. 23 years old. You know, he's got, he's got a, if you just look at like this, the standard number, numbers here, you're not going to be impressed. He's one and three, four, seven, five ERA. It's 11 starts. The kid, the kid's gotten great stuff. Okay. So, for me, I would package up. Teddy, uh, um, Teddy, Teddy, I would package up Ted Simmons. What? That wouldn't work. <laughs> I would package up Tommy Edmond. Yeah. I combined the T and the D. Okay. Tommy Edmond uh -huh. and one of those young pitchers that I just acquired okay. at the deadline and see if I see if that would get it done for Brian. Woe. Okay. So you're proposing that to me because I'm the Mariners. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, we like Tommy Edmond. But if you swap that out and give us Brendan Donovan instead, you got a deal. Okay. Yeah. I need All right. pitching. All right. I'm just, I didn't yeah. know. Like, because if I'm the Mariners. I didn't realize that until you just said that. But yeah, I would. Because if I'm the Mariners, that's what I'm doing. That's fine. I'm going, oh, you got a deal, mm -hmm. but it has to be Donovan, not Edmund. Fine. Okay. That's fine. I'm I, fine with it too. I need pitching. I need starting pitching. Wu would, but Wu would step right in. Could he be an ace one day? Yeah, he could. Will he be? I don't know. But I, I think based on projections, because he's 23, so you have to, you have to factor in the projection projection on this. I think at worst he's a number three. At worst, I need pitching. Yeah. I would rather trade Edmund based on his age, and he still has eligi eligibility, and also what I have right now on my big league roster, as well as what's coming through the pipeline. But push comes to shove, like you just did with me, Donovan, sure. Yeah. I'm not saying it wouldn't hurt. Donovan's a really good player, multifaceted, can play anywhere, developing. But I can't I can't let a, a position player stand in the way of getting a young, cost-controlled pitcher with a ton of upside. What That's is, where I'm at. What do you guys think? What is Brendan Donovan's ceiling? Like, what kind of player do you see him becoming? Same with Lars Newbar. What are their What are those two? What are their ceiling? Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Like BK had, like Ben Zobrist. Yeah, that's what BK had as as his for Donovan. Somewhat comparable Ben Zobrist. Like, do you feel bad getting rid of a Ben Zobrist compared to, like, we all feel bad. Oh, we got rid of Sandy Alcantara. We got rid of Zach Gallon. We got rid of. Randy Rosarena, sure. Dolores Garcia, those type of guys. That's a good way to put it. Like, no. Do does Newpar and Donovan? Do those guys feel like they'd be as big of a hit if you lost them compared to the other two? Especially if they go to Seattle, where it seems like who cares what Seattle's doing? They're going to be in a completely <laughs> different league. Right. They never make it to the. They made it to the playoffs like once in the last twenty years. 
they have a good team. They still aren't making the playoffs. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, because you gave up. You gave up a Cy Young. Yeah, winner in Sandy Alcantara. You're just would, you're would giving, giving up, up yeah. Zobris, who's who's a very very good player for sure, for sure. But no, not, especially not if somebody like Brian Wu or. Bryce Miller or, you know, Logan Gilbert. Logan Gilbert's already established. But mm-hmm. especially if the, one of those guys comes in and he's in your rotation for the next seven years. It's, it, to me, well, it's a no-brainer. Or they brainer. project to be, too, right? So, that, so to your Very exact fair. methodology mm-hmm. here, Marshy, talking about, okay, would I trade Ben Zobrist for, um, I don't know, give me a pitcher, a good pitcher, a good two or three. A good two or three. Um, Jeez. I know, right? My brain went dead, too. Yeah. I mean, Sonny Gray. Okay. We just saw him. Top so, of mind. So would I trade Ben Zobris for Sonny Gray, even though I kind of still have more Ben Zobris on my roster? The answer is yes. Mm-hmm. Because you still have Tim, Tommy. Timmy. No, I'm doing it. <laughs> you still have Tommy. Tommy Edmund. <laughs> Tommy Edmund. Uh, you still have these prospects that you just picked up mm-hmm. that Matt Holiday, out of nowhere, just decided to give props to Prieto saying he's a pretty damn good player. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it, if you already have the next Ben Zobrists in mm-hmm. your lineup, why wouldn't you trade the one you that they're wanting? And yeah. I'm, now I'm wondering if they ended up getting those infielders. We were sort of giving them crap about it when they made the moves. Like, how many middle infielders do you need? But maybe right. they're already preparing for a trade like this that would send a Brendan Donovan to yeah. Seattle or maybe somewhere else. That's a good on, call. Maybe they're 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 stocking up. And who and who did the Mariners just DFA? Colton Wong. And who was Colton Wong's replacement? Tommy Edmond. Tommy Edmond. <clears throat> and everybody complained. Everybody thought the Cardinals were being cheap. How could you do this to Colton Wong? He was a punching bag for years, but then he had a good you know two two year spat. And it's like, how could you get rid of Colton Wong? Mm-hmm. Well, because Tommy Edmond stepped up. Yeah, it was a similar player. And he was cost controlled. He wasn't a free agent. It was going to cost them less. And and quite honestly, less. his production too has been better since that moment. Right. So to to your point, Marsh. Yeah. If, even if you give up a Donovan or an Edmund, do you have somebody else on your roster now, or somebody in the pipeline that you project? That you project. It's still projection. It might mm-hmm. not happen, but that you project to give you similar production for less. Well, also so the Vikings just did. By releasing Dalvin Cook. Yeah. Also, you look at uh, like a guy like Victor Scott, center fielder, guy steals bases, gets on base, doing really well in the minors. You have Tommy Edmond fill that center field slot for a little bit. I mean, if they end up trading Donovan, he'd just go right back to center or to second base, and then mm-hmm. you would have one of your outfielders, one of your 12 outfielders <laughs> play center field. Actually right. play outfield? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's an interesting concept. <laughs> There's, yeah, it, it is wild. And they should have moved you to the outfield instead of second oh, base. Oh, wow. What, yeah, probably. Where, where would you yeah, have put no, Anthony? A good call. And where, Anthony? Oh, well, that goes back to the question of where do you put left. your best players? <laughs> where do you put your worst players? <laughs> left. Well, you, know, you didn't have the arm, apparently. No arm. Left. Um, <laughs> well, center field, then. Uh, I don't know about I feel the like range. you cover ground. <laughs> I think the range would have been, would have been fine. <laughs> Jamie, I wasn't terrible. I didn't say you were terrible. <laughs> I couldn't field. throw. Well, I didn't say that either. The coach did. <laughs> <laughs> it would be better if you did. No, I'm not insulting you. I've never watched you play. Anthony, How you can, can I tell? You can play wherever you want. It's Freedom Friday. <laughs> yeah, there you it go, is. Marsh. Thank you. 310, your time check is brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. Let's do our sports six back next. You got 314-399-9646. That's the Air Comfort Service text line. Or if you're watching us via the YouTube channel at 101 ESPN SDL, uh, you can always leave us a question there in the chat room as well. Sports six back next.
It's time for the Fast Lane to answer your sports questions. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. I want to have them answered immediately. Asking me all these weird questions. Answer the question. Answer the question. Answer me! The Sports Six Pack is refreshed by Mackie O'Brien's. Your go-to Irish pub in St. Louis for over 42 years. Time for the Sports Six back here in the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. Air Comfort Service tax line is 314-399-9646. Our YouTube channel is at 101 ESPN STL, so you can leave us a question uh, either way in one of those two spots. Here's Andrew Marsh with your questions. Question number one. All right, gentlemen, from the 314, is everyone done answering the cards you up text now? Oh, yeah. Guys? Uh, They're blocked. Okay. They're blocked. They don't even come through anymore. Mm. They stopped reaching out to me yeah. a while ago. Oh, we're done. Marshy. Marsh. Marsh. Marshy. What? Marsh. Oh, they pissed me off last night. Oh, last night? Yeah. They texted were you, you last night. Were you still ah, answering texts? I went texts? over to the house last oh, night. Oh, my god! Before 2 a.m. I was at their house. That's right. He was. He just showed up. I just showed up. It looks a little needy. I'm not going to lie. Wow. A little house party. With a beer and dog in hand. Beer and dog. Jumbo dog, that is. Oh, you bragger. He went jumbo <laughs> dog. That's right. He showed up to the house. Jumbo dog in hand. <laughs> Ready to go. Oh, Marsh. Ah. I what think I blocked him, though, after last night. Oh, you went well, over yeah, there, they, and then you blocked yeah, him? I mean, come on, they, yeah, know, they, know, they, know, they know they don't care, nah, man. I mean, that doesn't matter. It's an embarrassing <laughs> encounter. How do we come back from that, from man. that showing? I, it was tough. Yeah, that's not great at all. Tell everybody what somebody called you. Oh, they said I was part of the problem <laughs> on our YouTube page. Well, the way Anthony described it, I mean, he really got to call part of the problem. He is. He even you signed. You have a problem. He even signed the petition. Marsh did. No, no, I didn't. That was the FedEx people. Oh, yeah. The that wasn't you. I wasn't a part of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I might be now. Oh. Question number two from the five six two guys. Can St. Louis really only go after two pitchers in the off season, as Gersh said yesterday? Oh, this is Anthony's thing. Get him, Anthony. Uh, Not I, the text. <laughs> no, I, I would sign more than that. I, I don't think that, that the grocery shopping uh, approach has worked well for the Cardinals. He even said it when he was saying, oh, all we needed last year was a catcher and a pitcher. Got it. Then what happened? You're not prepared for worst case scenario. So I know their line of thinking. It is, hey, we got Michaelis. We got Matt's. If we sign two pitchers and one of the young guys emerge, we're good. And you know they're going to take that philosophy. So the Texas question, no, I think they should get three pitchers and not have to worry about whether or not a young guy steps up. Because what if a young guy does not step up? What if Graceffo has a bad spring? Or whoever, whoever you're hoping for, yeah. McGreevy. And they're not ready. Well, you, yeah, you can't do that. Then what? It's got to be the Dakota Hudson show again or the Matthew Libertor show again. And we're going to be complaining about the pitching staff. At worst, somebody's got to go to the pen. And you're still going to have injuries. And you're still going to have performance issues. So why not get three veteran starters, revamp this thing, and then attack it that way? And fill in some of those young spots with the bullpen. Because I do not think it's it's wise to spend money in the bullpen. I know people disagree with that, but that's how you it's how you get Andrew Miller at the end of his career. That's how you spend too much for Brett Cecil. I think young guys need to occupy your bullpen. Live arms, high strikeouts. Cardinals brought these guys along in the past. Wayne Wright. I don't, th I, think, I don't think Michael Walker ever did the pen, but there's other guys. Lance Lynn was in the pen at one point. I think that's how you can develop them. That's just my opinion. Question number three. From the 618, what do you guys think about the early postseason matchups for late Major League Baseball? So I went on MajorLeagueBaseball.com. Yeah, what do we got? All right. In the American League, 
The two buys go to the Orioles and the Rangers. The wild card series matchups would be the Blue Jays at the Twins and the Astros at the Rays. So that is the American League matchup. Okay. So Toronto and Minnesota? Yeah, not, not fun. E, uh, Houston and Tampa, I think, would be good. That would be a good matchup. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then let's go to the National League. The Dodgers would be the second seed. The Braves would be the number one seed. So those two Ooh. teams would get buys. Okay. Oh, I, I got you. And then the wild card series matchup would be the Reds at the Brewers and the Phillies at the Giants. I like both. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have such an interesting contrast there. So obviously you got the division. Nobody no, nobody here wants to see it, but at least it's a division matchup. Like if we could step away from St. Louis and just watch from a baseball standpoint, yeah. the Reds have all this young talent, and they're going against Milwaukee, who is obviously a division rival. And then yeah. this other matchup, Philly, is absolutely loaded with expensive talent, and the Giants are absolutely loaded with, with nobody. inexpensive <laughs> nobodies. <laughs> yeah. And young and young talent. I think that's that would be an interesting contrast too. So I'd be interested in both of those. Wouldn't it be wild if two National League Central teams made the playoffs? I know yes. there's an extra team than what there has been in the in the previous uh, postseasons, but um, I, I, I would find that hilarious just mm-hmm. due to the fact that we keep saying the National League Central is terrible. Yeah, which yeah. it is. Like in my opinion, it is. It is. Well, yeah. it's getting better. But yeah, I guess so. Question number four. From the 314, do you guys agree that the ultimate nightmare would be if Stan Kroenke bought the Cardinals and moved them to L.A. to spite St. Louis? We kind of talked about this yesterday yeah. during a break. And, Marsh, you brought up a good point in that Stan Kroenke, is, uh, it, look, Stan Kroenke is awful for what he did with the Rams. He's also a businessman. He knows that he's going to make – plenty of money here if he just keeps the Cardinals in St. Louis. I don't I don't th- I don't think he's going to give up money or for- adding a third team out there in LA would be yeah, all that great. Right. You'd be third fiddle to. No kidding. I think right. the Angels are second fiddle in LA. Big time. Imagine what the LA Cardinals would be. Yeah. <laughs> no. Just playing. Right, but you're you're right though. I mean it, it that would make no sense from a business standpoint. No. No, and in fact Cronky he'd make way more money keeping the team here. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And hell, he'd probably bring players in. Yeah, he'd probably. probably. <laughs> wow. He'd probably bring in, like, Shohei Otani. <laughs> he probably would. I'm not even joking. <laughs> he's not afraid to spend the money. Yeah. He's an absolute asshat. There is no doubt about right. it. But he's not afraid to spend the money. Hmm. I think what made moving to L.A. easy for the Rams in particular is they already had that culture established out there they already had la rams fans that was already a franchise at one point in time you couldn't do that in baseball i mean you could but like look what the a's are doing right now like how is that going to translate we look at vegas vegas is huge with hockey because that was a homegrown team i'm not sure how the vegas fans feel about the raiders and i'm not sure how they feel about the a's i'm sure they'll support the team yeah but it's not the same i think the raiders are easier for them to support one it's an nfl team people love True. the nfl uh and it's raiders the raiders name for sure is his, it has history to it right yeah i do feel like the a's that's gonna be a different animal I mean, you have to support a team for what eighty-one games mm-hmm. at home. Mm-hmm. The and NFL it's hot as hell there. Yeah, the NFL doesn't have that. You know, that's why a lot of their games are so popular because there's so few of them. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's going to be an interesting dynamic. Yeah, and they're going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. We just got a text from the three one four. Y'all just blanked everybody's mind. <laughs> Fluid mm. with everybody's mind. Yeah. Either way, it's not going to happen. We don't have to worry about it. Question five. Question number five. From the 980. I'm, I don't know if you guys have been asked this question before, but how would you guys feel about Major League Baseball eliminating division divisions and just having two leagues with the top teams making the playoffs? And do you think it's something that we could see in the future? I don't think it's something we can see in the future. I do find it I do find it interesting, and I think all sport. I would find it interesting for all sports. Mm-hmm. So if you got rid of the division, everybody's worried about what? The division rivalries. Okay, okay, fine. You would still see the Cubs. It's not like you wouldn't face the Cubs. Mm. 
but what you would do is create the le the legitimate top teams, legitimate top teams. So six teams or eight teams, however you want to do the playoffs, it would be the top teams. Yeah, they'll you never know? do it just for that they reason. They won't. Right. But because, like, could you imagine the NFL? Yeah. The NFL did that. So you're not seeing, no, sorry, you wouldn't see Tom, Tom Brady last year at, you know, seven and nine or whatever it was, seven and ten. You would get somebody else. Yeah, that, but that's exactly why they won't do it. Because right now, can you imagine, like, where, just out of curiosity, where do the Reds fit? If, if we did that format right now, where's mm -hmm. the NL Central? Do they uh, even have a playoff team? Yeah, they probably would. Well, Let's yeah, see they have, I mean, they already have two right now. Yeah, but that's because the division wild card. Like, division winner automatically gets in. All right, let's so see you here. could have a division winner right. that doesn't qualify for the playoffs if the if the league is strong. Do you, know, do you know understand what I'm saying, Anthony? So yeah. the Reds, the Reds, they are would the, still be in. They'd still be in because there's seven teams. The Reds are the sixth seed, so okay. there would be two teams. <laughs> so Braves, Dodgers, Giants, Phillies, Brewers, Reds. That'd be the six. Is it six or seven? Seven. Seven Marlins. I mean, so who who gets three, left out three, then? Four, five, six, seven. Nobody. Nobody would. I wonder. I don't think they'll end up doing this, but they did already Here. shift with the with the even schedule. True. the The National League wouldn't be impacted. The American League would. Interesting. So it's top seven for the American because League. of the Twins. Be the Orioles, the Rays, the Rangers, the Astros, the Blue Jays. Teams that already would get in. So that was one, two, three, four, five. You know the, the final two teams? Probably the Yankees and the Red Sox. The Yankees and the Red Sox. Oh, the national media would go ballistic. The Mariners wouldn't get in. The Twins wouldn't get in. Based on record, if you just did it that way for uh, the league. Yeah, that, so that's kind of what I was thinking. This is why I don't think you'll, you'll see that format. Would you rather see that? And the American League. National League doesn't get impacted. American League, though? They yeah, would. I would absolutely rather see competitive teams make the playoffs. You, if you want the Cardinals to not just win their division, it'd be interesting. Yeah, it would right. Be, it'd, be change, it'd change everything. Yeah, if you're, if you're sick, you're right, Marsh. If you're sick of that, if you're sick of, hey, just win the division, get in, you would have to push yourself more. You would now be comparing yourself to the top teams. You'd have no in choice. Your league. You'd you have no you choice. Couldn't, you couldn't lay up. Right. You'd have to you'd have to you'd go have to for go. it. Yeah. yeah. How many how many teams okay, so Jamie, NFL. You wanna do it for just last year? Sure. How many teams make it in the NFL? Seven? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's basically the same. It would be the yeah. Eagles, the 49ers, Vikings, Cowboys last year. They all made the playoffs. Giants, same deal. They made the playoffs. Seahawks made the playoffs. One team. Tampa. Tampa would be out. Yeah. Oh, who was the team? Uh, the, the Lions got screwed. The Lions would be in. Would have been in based on that formula. And so you, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nobody. It would have been the same seven teams for the AFC. I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah, I would like to see it, quite frankly. Question number six. Final question for you guys from the 661. Lots of movement in college football with conference realignments. How do you see the future of college conferences? Will it ultimately become a two major conference setup with smaller schools just being left out? I'm going to have an unpopular opinion about it. We'll talk about it next here on 101 ESPN.
101 ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. The Cards lose to the Twins last night by a final score of 5 to 3. They dropped 2 of 3 against Minnesota. Now they'll take on the Colorado Rockies as Adam Wainwright takes the mound, going for win number 199. First pitch between the Cards and the Rockies, 7-15 tonight. College football, Oregon and Washington are set to join the Big Ten in 2024. We're going to talk about that next right here in the Fast Lane. I'm Andrew Marsh, and the Sports Center Update is brought to you by Saliga. Heating and Cooley. Independent American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning Dealer. Washington are finalizing a deal to join the Big Ten, sources told oh, yeah, ESPN. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What yep. is ha- what is the Pac-12 was where they played? Correct. <laughs> it's gone now, isn't it? That's basically. It. Yeah, basically. The Sorry, Pac- Anthony. The Pac-12. I did not see that. In t- I did not see that today. <laughs> what? Why would you apologize for me about the Pac-12? I well, don't for care. not knowing. No, not knowing about Oregon leaving. I didn't look oh, at that. Yeah, no. Yeah, Oregon and Washington finalizing a deal to join the Big Ten, according to ESPN, a move that continues to dwindle the Pac-12 and puts the conference future in the crosshairs. So USC, UCLA, Oregon, Washington, Splitsville. Arizona has also applied to, to and, and and has been admitted to the Big 12. So we continue to see conference realignment. I said that I probably have an unpopular opinion about this, and I, and I do. I, I usually do anyways. No, no, yeah. you're great. No, I, I'm not. It's, it's a fact. All right, you win. Uh, thank you, Jamie. <laughs> um, <laughs> I live with it. It's fine. <laughs> I don't care. I, I, I don't. I don't care about the conferences. I, I never have. I've never cared about Anthony, the conferences. Anthony, this country was built on conferences. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What? There were 13 conferences when this when this country when this started. this great country. Those, those, yeah. those stars on the flag. Yeah. It's all just the conferences. States, right? Absolutely. The conferences. Yeah. Yeah. However, the stripes on the flag rep- represent the college football conferences well that this nation yeah. is built upon. Good call. I mean, Good call. come on. Uh, do I do I care about the the Pac-12 conference championship? No, I care about the playoffs. You used to. I used to, to some degree, Jamie. Uh huh. Now I yeah. care about the playoffs. I care Got about you. the play. I care about the, the the best teams. I want to see an expansion of the playoffs. I care about the best teams in a given year having an opportunity to play for a championship. Yeah. I thought the dumbest thing in sports, sports that I care about. Okay. Yeah. And I love football and I love college football. I thought the dumbest thing was Rose Bowl. This is it. This is the Mecca. What, why? Bowl, What's the big bowl game, games? It, big, tw- big Ten Championship. It's a beautiful stadium. It is. I get the tradition. I get the history of why do it. You, why do you hate tradition? Why? Uh, why do you hate that everything that it was built upon? I just want to tear it down. Hmm. Drive a tractor over it. No, I don't. I just care about crowning a championship champion because this is America. What if... Anthony, what if the conference champions in each conference are the only ones that make the college playoffs, mm. and then you whittle your way down from there? Because if the NFL showed us anything from last year, the Tampa Bay Bucks weren't deserving oh, of a playoff berth, he just wants and to, they got it anyways. He just wants to be that because they Andrew. won their division. Doesn't like Tom Brady. Doesn't like Florida. That's a good point. That's where he smashed his face in the pool. So I can understand his grudge. I did. It makes sense. All right. So let real talk here now. Yeah. Yeah. The conferences thing, I feel like it's just a thing of the past at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's what the SEC is just loaded up. Everybody wants to be in the SEC and the Big Ten. And the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. And but. Here's a real question I have. Is the business of college football in jeopardy? Hear me out. Because Mm -hmm. 
Like when you had all these conferences and you had some heavy hitters in each conference, yeah. it was guaranteed revenue for some of the smaller schools from the schools that aren't, you know, big catches on TV, that sure. aren't big, you know, advertising dollars. Yeah. Now you're putting all of the big dogs into the same conferences. They are, they are going to make hand over fist, and that's fine, but the percentage of teams that aren't the big dogs is greater than the percentage of teams that are lined up to be the heavy hitters. Yeah. So is the business of college football in jeopardy? Because all of those other schools are going to be screwed. I don't have a way to combat the the smaller schools, so I guess I'll concede that point to you, Jamie. Like the the, the smaller schools, you know not I, I can even the less popular schools it. that yeah. you know don't draw the TV revenue. They get that revenue when they play Notre Dame. They sure. get that revenue when they yeah, play the Michigan donors. State. Right. What right. Michigan rather? I don't know. I don't know how you solve that. I don't. Outside of you continue to schedule. You know, you have a twelve a twelve game schedule, and two of those games are going to be. Hey, um, Central Michigan, we'd love to play you this year. Here, we're going to set up your entire, you know, financial future one year. Just play play us, you know, play Alabama, come to Tuscaloosa. Uh, outside of that, I don't know what the what the answer is. But, Jamie, when you say, you know, like the college, the college football financial future, I think it can only expand because of the eyeballs that you're going to attract if you expand the playoffs. And those yeah. teams, those teams aren't making the playoffs, anyways. No, you're right. So I, I'm not, I'm not overlooking the fact that I am, I am looking at almost kind of like the elitist programs. But as a college football fan, I'm also being honest. As much as I love my Central Michigan Chippewas, I, I want to watch Alabama and Georgia with something on the line, a playoff. I want to watch Ohio State and Georgia with something on the line. And college football up until recently didn't have that. We won their conference. It's it, champ. It's kind of like the national I, – I hate the national central thing. Won the division. <laughs> yeah. We're awesome. You haven't won anything. Mm -hmm. Win a World Series and then talk to me. Maybe – and again, maybe, maybe I got a, a, a bad outlook on this, a bad opinion on this, and I'm overlooking tra tradition and all that. I don't care. I'm just being part. honest. Yeah. What do I want to watch as a college football fan? Because this is entertainment. I know it's big, big dollars. Yeah. I know kids are – you know, they're fighting for scholarships, and they're also fighting for their NFL future. I'm not overlooking that. But for me as a viewer, I want to see the best teams play for a championship. Expand the playoffs, <laughs> get the best teams in, and let's go. Yeah, so <laughs> – no secret, I'm not a college football aficionado, all right? I'm not. I'll watch the playoffs. I watch the big games. So what you're talking about mm -hmm. is music to my ears because sure. I'm not watching the crap teams anyways. Yeah. I'm not tuning in. I With don't care. With all due respect. With all due respect to those teams, like e even if it's Alabama, even if it's Georgia, whoever is playing against Team X, Y, or Z, that are I'm not watching. Right. right. I'm watching the highlights. Okay, all right, another bloodbath. Right. You know. Yeah, Alabama, I'm not watching the games. Right, Alabama 55, Vanderbilt 10. Yeah, You're not, not watching that game that, that 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 week. No, and I'm not watching Vanderbilt against Central Michigan either. No disrespect. CMU could pull some upsets, though. They have in the past. Great for them. Yeah. I hope they do, quite honestly. But I am watching Georgia, USC, mm -hmm. UCLA, and... Arkansas, you know, like even though Arkansas is not a huge, but they're recognizable programs. Sure. I'm watching those games. So if you put more of those teams into conferences where the games matter, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm there. Yeah, I'll turn on college football on Saturday to watch a middle of the season game yeah. because it's compelling. Too often, Jamie, you could go through a college football Saturday and really only pick out two games. Two games. Oh, yeah. You Absolutely. could easily go through a, an entire Saturday and say, ah, okay, well, Alabama's playing Vanderbilt this week. Um, Oklahoma's playing, I don't know, you know, whoever. Like, it, you just, you look at some of these big teams. Georgia, Georgia has some low-ranked SEC team or some non con You know, they're playing Tennessee Tech this week. There's too many of those games throughout the college football Saturday. Whereas I know the NFL is a different beast, but you've at least got some pretty good matchups each and every week. And you'd certainly tune in with the excitement of like NFL Sunday 
Red Zone channel and all that, just going through the games constantly. There's always something. There's always something compelling. Well, there'd be more games that mattered. <clears throat> right. So, you know, you're not going to get towards the end of the season with an Alabama or a Georgia or whatever. We're like, ooh, two losses. You know, uh, you might have a team now that's like one of the best teams in the country that has two or three losses. Yeah. Because they play another team that's one of the best in the country. Right. To whereas they would never have played each other. And maybe it's a revenge spot in Whatever. a playoff game or something. Yeah. Yeah. More intrigue. I think this, this despite the conferences. Anthony, never... I like your idea. Thank you, Jamie. You're All right. I, I've convinced one person at yeah. least. Yeah. I'll sign the petition. Yes. <laughs> Does Alec Burleson fall into the category of needing more playing time? We'll talk about that next on 101 ESPN. Must. Tickets on sale now for the Ironman 55 this weekend at the Federated Auto Parts Raceway in Peevely. your vehicle's performance and gas mileage with Lucas Fuel Treatment at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Simply add it to your tank at your next fill-up to eliminate carbon and varnish deposits. Right now, get two bottles of Lucas Fuel Treatment for $10. See store for details. Stop by your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store or shop online at O'ReillyAuto.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Sometimes I just cannot believe all the storms we've gone through here. I can only hope that we'll be able to leave this house to you one day, baby. You're our legacy. Planning for these disasters will make sure we're safe. And it's the best way to protect that legacy. Protect your legacy. Visit ready.gov forward slash plan for the tools and tips you need to start your emergency preparedness plan today. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council.
you give him enough at bats, you're going to see a guy that can really hit. Like that, everything's on the barrel. Line drive, home run into the Cardinals' bullpen. He doesn't swing and miss much. He puts the ball in play. He gets to the hop, hoppy fastball at the top of the zone. He, he have, has different ways of beating you. It's going to be tricky just because of the outfield situation to get him those at-bats because you're also looking to do the same thing with Dylan Carlson. So with T.O. and Newt and Walker. But, yeah, I think if you were to give that kid a, a stretch of at-bats, you, you'd see a, a pretty darn good hitter. Ollie Moore, we'll talk Give about. Give him a bat set, Ollie. Alec Burleson, he just told you he can't. He's got 42 guys he's trying to get at bats for. If you hit, you play. <laughs> That's all there is to it. What do you do? Seriously, what do you do? If, you tra- if you're trying to get at bats for Jordan Walker and you got to make sure that you get at bats for Lars Newbar and you try to make sure that Dylan Carlson, Carlson isn't left off the roster and. Or left on the bench, I should say. Tyler O'Neill. Like, where where are the ABs going to come from for Alec Burleson? If you hit, you play. So if you, so you get him in the lineup, and if he gets a hit that night, he'll come back the next night. Yep. Okay. And if you if you don't hit, you don't play. There was a manager who used to do that here. Who's that? And guys used to say after they left St. Louis – go to Toronto or Milwaukee. Yeah. Wow. They didn't love that aspect of it. Felt felt like if they went 0 for 4, yeah. they'd be benched the next day. They should be. Hit the damn ball. <laughs> <laughs> I like your cutthroat uh, approach, Jamie. I really do. I mean, how has it worked out this year? It's... Give me everybody playing time. <laughs> uh, offense has been good. The pitching is not. Ah, whatever. But, I mean, seriously. I know, like, Ben Fred wrote about it for the Post, and, hey, Ollie talked about it. Yeah, give him a little, uh, give him a little run. Let's see it. Why wouldn't you? You got to tra- trade some of these guys. Or you build up trade value for this guy. Like, somebody might give you if he's part of a package deal. Isn't this part of the problem, though? What is? Alec Burleson. Uh-huh. This is, to me, this is the Cardinals over the last five years. They have too many half players. <laughs> Alec, Bur- Alec Burleson can't play defense. Jordan oh, Walker can't play defense. Stop right there. Stop. Outfield it. defense. Stop Outfield okay, defense. I, I'm going to correct you right now. Correct me. Did you see him drop into the splits to make that catch yesterday? Burley, I, Goldie better be looking over his shoulder at first base. I, I was right there. I was oh, right in the first base dugout. I and thought for sure his groin, his hammy, <laughs> his wrist just ripped. Just done. <laughs> But Big Boy's got some flexibility to him. Listen to this guy. What? All season, Marsh. What has he said about Burleson? Can't he, play defense. He makes me nervous in the outfield. Yeah, yeah that's in he the makes out- me nervous in the outfield. That's in the outfield, Anthony. Well, you, you don't. You, you blasted me yesterday and the last two months about trading Goldschmidt. How dare I? You said. What's wrong? What, what's your deal with Goldschmidt? Why don't you like him? Why? Goldie's defense is fine. What's the problem with that? Well, if you if you're gonna play Burleson, where are you gonna play him? He makes you nervous in the outfield. You said I'm not talking about the outfield. Okay, uh, you play him at first. DH. Goldie's at first. He, listen, he makes me nervous, but so does Jordan Walker. Right. I mean, Jordan Walker, even a, a simple fly ball out to him yesterday, mm-hmm. he <laughs> waited to the last yeah. second to be like, oh, whoa. Oh, oh. There's like, nothing <laughs> worse than when the ball's coming down and you try to back backhand it like that. That is just it's a recipe for disaster. I, yeah. <sighs> You so, definitely can't have both of them in the corner outfields. Well, you tried. <laughs> I feel like you tried multiple times at the start of the year. Oh, you did. You got half players. You're trying to develop Walker in the outfield. Okay, well, he's not an outfielder right now. You're trying to develop Burleson, I guess, as an outfielder. He's not an outfielder. You got too many half players. You got too many of the same guy on the roster. What's your problem with Burleson? Seriously. Let's isolate this for a second because <laughs> he's like, a DH all, all day long. You can't, just like Jordan Walker's a you DH walked into the office, just like Wilson Contreras is a DH today. You have 42 DHs. And the first thing you said is why the hell are we still playing Burleson? I did not say that. And Marshy and I, we got pretty heated. Hey, I did not like your treatment of our guy, Jamie. You know for a fact that's not the first thing I did when I walked in the office. First thing I did when I walked in the office is listen to somebody talk to me for 30 minutes. It was riveting. <laughs> it was riveting. And, and you know it. Mm-hmm. 
I, uh, unfortunately, I read, the same, I read the same paragraph of the same article 42 times. <laughs> unfortunately, Anthony, I had to put my headphones in. Yeah. That weren't listening to anything. Yeah. But still, once that was over, mm-hmm. you were talking smack about our guy. I was. I did not appreciate it. Stop it. You tell me then, Jamie. What? How do you, how do you, you got, you got nothing but DHs on this team. Now, now try to get him some playing time. <laughs> you have this face of like, I have no idea how to answer this question. <laughs> yeah. Let's go through the, you want to go through the old Cardinals roster right now? Huh? Let's you go play. through, the, let's go through the old Cardinals roster. <laughs> Anthony, you hit, you play. I don't care where you play. You're going to keep banging that drum. Yeah, I will. Will Contreras. <laughs> Put him in shortstop. Apparently, Will, <laughs> apparently Wilson Contre- Contreras uh, can barely tie his shoes, according to the Cardinals. So he's basically a DH. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We got hit in the head, Anthony, by a baseball bat. Hey, we can get him Velcro shoes. Burleson, DH. <laughs> Walker, let's get him some DH. Healies. He can just roll on, a, roll his way down to first Hell, base. Brandon Donovan's a really good he's player. Still, he couldn't throw. He's still talking. Yeah, to have him as a DH. You block. Yeah, it blocked. The DH blocked. We got Adam Wainwright. He's going to be the DH at the end of the season. He, he should be. be. The last game of the season, it, I'm telling you right now, hang on. If Ollie Marmel is listening, if Michael Gersh is listening, John Mosaic, we actually know you're listening. If Adam Wainwright is not your DH for the last game of the season, last home game of the season, that's a missed opportunity. 100%. I mean, I, why no, the hell hey, not? Why no, would you not? No argument. Yeah, no argument. But let Wayno take some cuts out there. Let him three, four at bats. I mean, come on, the people will love it. And never mind the fact that oh, he gets a hit. That'd be awesome. What if he just? <laughs> what if he hits a dinger? Ah, oh, be great. His first at bat as a Cardinal was a home run. Imagine if his last at bat was a home run. Yeah. This team's trying to win, though. You can't make this stuff up, Anthony. They're not. <laughs> you saw it last yeah, night. I did first hit. Hey, I got a question. What the hell happened to Juan Yepes? Oh, he, he listen, there's certain yeah, players. Where is he? This just, he just doesn't. Uh, man, we're not going to call him up ever again. The FBI can't find him yeah. right now. <laughs> you feel like there's certain players that have photos, you know? Yeah. And then there's some players that. It's the exact opposite. Hundred percent. And what are his stats can, this they year? They can do nothing. What are his stats this year? Because, like, here, here's my thing: Is he hurt? I, I don't know, uh, Jamie. You just said it perfectly, my friend. The FBI can't find this dude. No, the reason I say that is because I follow the Memphis Redbirds and the Springfield Cardinals and all that stuff on Twitter, and I watch their highlights all the time. Mm-hmm. And it's you know, it's Luke and Baker, it's Mason Wynn, it's the new guys. That get, Last year, it was like Juan Yepes, Juan Yepes. Right. So if he, if he's playing, nah. why are they not showing his highlights? Nah. If, unless there's none. He's batting 224. His Whoa. OBP is 317. So there you go. OPS, Vance, OPS 670. Marsh, Marsh just answered our question for us. And he's the guy that comes off the bench and hits you home runs. He's got four this year. I'll tell you what, Marsh. What the and the minors. No, I, Albert? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I made two absolutely brilliant predictions this year. Yeah. Oh, boy. The first yeah. one, let me pat myself on the back. Here, Jamie. Hold was on. it the White Sox Hold winning the AL The first one was that <laughs> the, first one was that the Chicago White Sox win the, win, would, would win the World Series. Yeah. Still yeah. got a lot of season left. That's a good prediction. The second one was that Juan Yepes would be the best and biggest surprise this year for the Cardinals. Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you got half of it right. Yeah. I'm it surprised. Is a surprise. that... Stay hot, yeah, Stone. I'm surprised. All right, gauntlet. We do, we do need a gauntlet uh, uh, contestant. So 314-399-9646. Just text in the word gauntlet. And if you haven't played in a while, we'll, uh, we'll line you up. Have an opportunity to play Jamie, Marsh, or the Anthony Stalter. Next on 101 ESPN.
category's one challenger. Can you master the gauntlet? Brought to you by Master, your hometown source for business communications for more than 30 years. Visit Mastor.com. It's the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN 402. Your time check is brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler with Jamie Rivers and Andrew Marshall, Anthony Stalter, and we welcome in Christopher, who is our gauntlet contestant today. What's up, Christopher? Hey, how's it going? Doing all right. First time in the gauntlet? It is the first time on air. I do it all the time on the radio. Oh. How do you do, typically? Um, 50-50. Okay. Who do you usually beat? Well, I, I, I'm i definitely not a hockey guy, so um, I usually don't do well when Jamie does hockey. But okay. um, I have coached football for 23 years. So. Oh, nice. Uh, high school? Where do... uh, high school and junior high, yeah. I just switched to junior high last year, but I coached high school football for 21 before that. No kidding. Do you mind if we ask what high school? Well, I was in Illinois at Carlisle for a long time. I bounced around, but I'm in Farmington, Missouri now. Oh, okay. All right. Very good. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, someone wants football. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say it because the wheel, the wheel is always listening. The wheel's the wheel, like Siri. Yeah, the wheel will grant yeah. you the exact opposite. Yep. Uh, Christopher, who would you like to take on today? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go with. Uh, you got Marsh, Jamie, Anthony. I think we just lost. Do we lost Christopher? Yeah, we may have. Oh, Marshy. Oh, Marshy. There okay, there we go. Christopher's All right. back. Christopher's okay. back. Whew. I'm All starting right. to get concerned about you, Christopher. I'm in a bad area, but I'm, I'll be in a better area here in a second. All right, no problem. Well, maybe you got abducted by aliens. <laughs> yeah, it's a possibility I mean, that's these days, right I guess. It's yeah. Happening. All right, Christopher, go ahead and tell Marsh to spin that wheel. Spin that wheel, Marshy. All right, Marsh, now get out. Please. Thank you. He's giving me the cone of the cone of science. Give me the cone of science, Jamie. What is wrong with me? Uh, he's giving me the launch code. <laughs> All right. So obviously, Christopher, you would you would have liked football, correct? Either way. Okay. What's the one category you really didn't want? Was it hockey? Yeah. All right. Well, don't worry about it. You got baseball, my friend. That sounds good. Okay. There you go. So I'm going to give Jamie the launch codes for baseball. Every question is worth two points today, unless Christopher or Marsh need the options, and then those questions are only worth one point if they get it right. Christopher, you ready? Yep. All right, question number one. Before they shut out the Cubs on Sunday, who was the last team the Cardinals shut out 3-0 back on July 8th? So before they shut out the Cubs on Sunday, who was the last team the Cardinals shut out 3-0 back on July 8th? That would have been right after the July 4th weekend. I don't remember who they played there. I'll have to take the options. New York Yankees, Miami Marlins, Chicago White Sox. Yankees, Marlins, White Sox. We'll go Yankees. Final answer? Final answer. All right, Christopher, question number two. Which Cardinals pitcher was the last to record 200 or more strikeouts in a single season? Hmm. 200 or more strikeouts. Let's go. Man, I hate to. It's probably going to be something like Lance Lynn, Wainwright, and uh, somebody else. Um, let's go with the options. All right. Is it Adam Wainwright, <laughs> Jack Flaherty, or mm. Miles Michaelis? Hmm. Let's go with. Let's go with uh, Michael's final answer. All right, Christopher. Question three: The last time the Cardinals were in the NLCS, which team defeated them? The last time the Cardinals were in the NLCS, which team defeated them? Hmm would have been NLCS. That was... Uh, I'll have to take the options again. Giants, Nationals, Dodgers. Nationals, why not, sir? All right. Question number four. Christopher, 
When David Freeze hit his walk-off home run in Game 6 against the Rangers in the 2011 World Series, which pitcher did he hit it off of? I'm going to need the options on that. All right. Was it Scott Feldman, Mark Lowe, or Neftali Feliz? Uh, let's go with Feliz. Final answer. All right, let's bring back Marsh from the Cone of Silence right now. I feel like those were tough questions today. Chris, how are you feeling? Uh, not great. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so tough questions. They were tough. Did Marsh see us? I don't think he saw us. He's not paying attention. No, he's talking to... He's talking to Grant. Grant. yeah. All right, he's making his way back in now. He's taking his time. He's taking his sweet Boy, time. he's slow today. Oh, Jeez. Oh. And he's walking slow. Jamie. What? It's not nice. It's uh, Marshy, welcome back. Hello. Marsh, are you ready? I'm ready to go. Jamie, go ahead. Tell him. Pack a lunch there, son. Yeah. Category is baseball today, Marsh. Oh, okay. I haven't done baseball in a Major while. Major League Baseball. Question number one. Before they shut out the Cubs on Sunday, who was the last team the Cardinals shut out? 3-0 back on July 8th. July 8th. 3-0. Oh, man. Okay, so they played the Marlins, and they stunk. And then they played the White Sox right before the trade deadline. So it would be the Chicago White Sox, final answer. Not the trade deadline, the All-Star, the All-Star break. White Sox, final answer. Mm. All right. I don't know if we're going to count that. I don't know what the hell he's doing. No. What? All right. You're wrong about the... Deadline. Yeah, I don't know if that affects the answer. No, we'll have to check the bylaws here. Yeah. Question number two. Which Cardinals pitcher was the last to record 200 or more strikeouts in a single season? Wow. Um, man, Michael Waka comes to mind. Going to need to use the options, though. Was it? Adam Wainwright, Jack Flaherty, or Miles Michaelis? Hmm. Hmm. Did Jack Flaherty get to 200? I feel like 200's a lot, you know, when you are pitching a full season. Couldn't tell you the last time Jack Flaherty pitched a full season. Ouch. Last Pride. year, Miles Michaelis. Pride of the Orioles taking a shot there. That's all right. He's excited to be there. Um, Miles Michaelis led the team last year, I believe, in strikeouts. Uh, so did he do that a few years ago? He was an all-star. Um, but Adam Wainwright, he's that tricky one. He's the one that you think, because he hasn't been striking out people a lot lately. Let's go. Let's just go with Miles Michaelis. Final answer. All right. Question number three, Marsh. The last time the Cardinals were in the NLCS, which team defeated them? That would be the Washington Nationals. Final answer. Final question. When David Freeze hit his walk-off home run in Game 6 against the Rangers in the 2011 World Series, mm -hmm. which pitcher did he hit it off of? Oh, damn it. What was his name? I remember what he looked like, too. What did he look like? Uh, he had long hair and he had a beard. He was a man. He, was he a had man. a beard. Uh, damn it. I don't want to use the options. I feel like his last name was Lowe. Um, is it Derek Lowe? No. I don't know. Let's use the options. I'm not going to pull it out without the options. Well, you shouldn't. All right. Was it? On YouTube, Marsh. Let's get this classic. Seriously. Scott Feldman. Neftali Feliz no. or Mark Lowe? Is it, oh, Mark Lowe. Or was it Scott Feldman? I think Feldman was in the pitch when Berkman tied the game. I think Mark Lowe was the one that he hit it off of. I, or maybe I have it flip-flop, but I went with, I said Lowe before. I said Derek Lowe, who I think is pitched for the Red Sox. Let's go with Mark Lowe, final answer. Are you dying to say something right now? Yeah. 
You can say it to him, though. He doesn't listen to me. No, no, no. <laughs> no. What? Based on those options. Scott Feldman. Oh, yeah. Say it. Corey's brother. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you. I was waiting for you to say. You Anthony. always do that. Yeah, but I only do when it's true. <laughs> I don't just make stuff up. Are you making up options? Yeah, no. He's... No, I'm just saying. I I was wondering They're if not... Jamie was dying, uh, saying Scott Feldman. You know, Corey's brother. They're not related though. <laughs> Jamie, <laughs> you're a treasure. <laughs> An absolute treasure. All right, let's go over these. Christopher versus Marcia. The last time the Cardinals were in the NLCS, which team defeated them? Christopher, you said the Nationals. Marsh, you said the Nationals. Correct answer is? It was, in fact, the Nationals. Marsh, Boy, do we remember that. Yeah, Marsh did not need the options, though. So Marsh has got a 2-1 lead today over Christopher. Which Cardinals pitcher was the last to record 200 or more strikeouts in a single season? Christopher, you said Miles McCullis. Marsh, you also said... The lizard eater himself, mm. Miles McCullis. Mm. Correct answer is the only guy that's truly got swing and miss of those three. Jack Flaherty it was Jack Flaherty. Mm. Two hundred thirty-one mm. strikeouts in twenty nineteen. Miles Michaelis though one hundred and fifty-three strikeouts in twenty twenty-two. Marsh protecting that two-one lead. When David Freeze. Hit, hit. Actually, you know what? Let's go with this other one here. Before they shut out the Cubs, actually, no. Let's go back. When David Freese hit his walk-off home run in Game 6 against the Rangers in the 2011 World Series, which pitcher did he hit it off of? Christopher, you went Nefitali Feliz. Marsh, you went with Mark Lowe. Correct answer is? Oh, Losey, Mark Lowe. Was Mark Lowe. So Marsh, you got a two-point lead. Final question. Before they shut out the Cubs on Sunday, who was the last team the Cardinals shut out 3-0 back on July 8th? Marsh, you went with the White Sox. Christopher, you went with the Yankees. Correct answer is... Anthony's World Series champion, the White Sox. <laughs> Christopher. You have chosen poorly. You lose. Not today. <laughs> Christopher, unfortunately, Marsh was on one today, and... He got you five to one. Sorry, man. Dang. That's all right. Thanks good for job, Marshy. Appreciate it. Hey, good job playing. Always appreciate you uh, texting in. Yeah, we'll do. I'll keep doing it. Thanks for playing. Thanks for listening. Better luck next time, Christopher. Thanks. All right. Nice job there, Marsh. I appreciate it. Nice job. Well done. Thank you. I don't think I get the Mark Lowe one if I didn't just see like a, a, a video of David Freeze. Hitting it. Hitting it. Have you seen the meme of Wolverine? And he's got, like, the picture in his hand. No. And he's, like, crying on his bed. <laughs> it's kind of how I feel when I watch, like, a video like that because uh -huh. it just brings me back to when this team was actually good in the playoffs. Oh, I mean, you're Sometimes in... I need to watch a video like that to get my spirits up. You were in the NLCS in 2019. Yeah, and they got swept. Sure. And they weren't competitive, really, no. in that at all. But <clears throat> you were there, you know? <laughs> what is that? What is that supposed to mean? You won the division that year. I don't care. Well, the Cardinals do. Damn it, Anthony. You won the division last year, too. I don't care. I sat Marshy. in this. Marshy. I sat right in this chair. Banner. Banner. NL Central champion. Anthony, I need you to you stop know? talking. <laughs> I sat right in this chair. That's what, the, that's what matters. And you watched me crumble. I did. As this team crumbled in the ninth inning. I always knew, Jamie. You weren't there that day. No. I always knew that Marsh was a huge St. Louis Cardinals fan. Of course, you know. I, I I never saw that side of Marsh until that day. When it wasn't even, it, it, the, the game wasn't even in doubt yet. I remember very and, vividly you said, oh, Bryce Harper, he's not, he won't get out. Then he walked and he scored like six runs. <laughs> They didn't have to add as many as they did in the top of the ninth, okay? I thought it was overkill for the Insurance Phillies, policy. Quite, quite frankly. He hasn't done anything. He'll strike out. Just wait. Walk. All right. It's Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. How will some of the Blues contracts look once the cap goes up? We'll talk about that next on 101 ESPN.
It's Fastlane on 101 ESPN with Jamie Rivers and Andrew Marsh and Anthony Stalter. How will some of the Blues contracts look once the cap goes up? So Tom Wilson received a seven-year, $45.5 million extension to stay with the Capitals. Some think that the deal is crazy. What? Others like it with the type of player that Wilson is. But when it comes to the Blues, how do you think some of these contracts will look once the cap goes up, Jamie? Well, let's talk about Tom Wilson just for a second. Uh, since he's the, uh, we'll call him the... Uh, the reason that we're talking about this. I think, listen, there's too many years on that contract. The Mm -hmm. back two, I think the back two years of that might look pretty rough, maybe three, but he's a unicorn. Like he's not as much of a unicorn as the Kachucks are, (laughs) but Tom Wilson, he scores you 20 goals, kills penalties, plays on your power play, obliterates people with hits and can fight with the heavyweights. Yeah. And can punch a hole through your skull. So like, there's no other Tom Wilson. Like, Milan Lucic was, like, the guy. Mm-hmm. Now Lucic is a veteran guy, a little older. He's still tough as nails. I wouldn't pet the cat the wrong way with him. He'll still put the teeth to the back of your throat. <clears throat> but he doesn't have the speed nice or, the visual. Goal, or, the, or the goal-scoring <laughs> ability that he once had before. Sure. Tom Wilson does. So if you possess unique skills, you get paid for it. That's it. That's why vanilla players don't make, you know, this kind of money. It's because if I, if the guy next to me can do exactly the same thing as me, but he's a year younger, two years younger, whatever, you're going with them. I'm not valuable. I mean, I'm valuable to somebody, but there's nothing special about me. I disagree. You're valuable to me, and yeah. I think you're special in, in a lot of ways, Jamie. Yeah, you said that before. I think you're a great father. I think Thank you're you. a great radio host. Uh, I think outstanding on TV, outstanding in, you know, on the radio, uh, natu- natural, natural. Uh, okay. <clears throat> confident guy, just good, great coach. Mm. A lot of skills, a lot just of value. Waiting for the, the the sucker punch, but no. Thank you, Anthony. I'm not gonna sucker punch you. I've always said you're a very perceptive individual. You're my so brother. Thank you. I'm gonna put um, you down. No, I appreciate that. But Tom Wilson's unique because he does something. He does a lot of things that not everybody can do. Yeah. Uh, so you pay the guy. You know, is it a contract you regret in a little bit? Maybe. So let's parlay that over to the Blues. And the one, the two names that I hear constantly when talking about the St. Louis Blues are contracts they're going to regret. Two names that I hear. Colm Pareko and Braden Shen. They're not the only ones that we hear, but they're the two that, that I look at and I'm like, why? Like, why? Colton Pareko is just 30 years old at $6.5 million. Do you know... Like, do you know what defensemen are going to make in two years from now? Six point five million is going to be like a number four defenseman. So Colton Pareko, who's better than a number four defenseman, you've got him locked in at six point five. Like I don't hate the deal, and what people say, well, the back end of that deal. How is Chris Pronger the back end of his deal? How is Zdeno Chara the back end of their deals? I'm not comparing him to them. They were huge men. That could skate. Colton Pareko is a huge man that can skate. So automatically, he's going to be able to defend and be relevant. Mm-hmm. If he was a huge guy and couldn't skate, wasn't fleet of foot, I'd be like, yee, this two years from now, who knows, right? But he's one of the best skaters on the ice. That will decline a little bit, but then so will his ice time, and you'll still end up with a pretty good defenseman for $6.5 million. And at the end of his contract, six point five will be bottom pair money in the NHL. So it'll actually be right where it needs to be. That kind of irks me about Colton Pareko. Not about him, but about people who think, oh, the contract, that one, they're going to regret that. And the Braden Shen deal, I get why they say it. I get it. Because he plays such a physical game, and those types of players, the David Backus, Backus, you know, you look at that and you're like, whoa, look at the tail end of his deal. Yeah. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. But Braden Shen will be younger than Backus was at the end of his deal. So, again, 6.5 for your number, you know, your number two centerman. Is that what he is? Mm-hmm. Probably going to be your number two centerman. Yeah. That's not bad. Two years from now, what's going to look like? You know, Kevin Hayes, who, you know, you're only paying 3.5 for it, but he had a $7 million contract. So, yeah, you know, I, I just think that, I think some of these deals will hold their value over the course of time. 
Uh, Tori Krug, you know, that's to be determined. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to be able to skate and move and pass and do all those things because he's a very agile, skillful player. You know, will will that you know hurt the Blues a little bit moving forward if he can't produce on the power play? We'll see. Justin Falk is kind of in the same category there, um, but I don't I don't look at the Blues contracts and go, man, that one there is really going to prohibit them in the future. Yeah. Not not from one of some of their top guys like if, uh, Marco Scandella at three point two. It's not prohibiting them, but it's one I bet you they would like to they would like to have that cap space. Sure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But when you've got your top players or guys of importance that you've paid money to, you have to look beyond the now at times. And I don't think it's as bad as some people portray it. Two years from now, three years from now, we'll revisit this and we'll find out. We'll see where the league average is for these guys, where, they're t where they slot in and what they're making, where the cap's at and all that stuff. And we'll see where their production is. I think some people will be pleasantly surprised when they see you know, how – how much these guys have held their value. That's Jamie Rivers and Anthony Stalter. We'll play narrative or, rea or reality next. Jamie, when it comes to refinancing, when it comes to knowing where the market is, when it comes to purchasing a home, saving up front, and maybe applying some of that those savings to either, oh, I don't know, your offer on the house or maybe a project that you want to tackle early on, like redoing the, the kitchen and stuff. You got a guy for that or just something that you know? Oh, I got a guy for that. Yeah, you do. My guy's Stewie. Darn right. Mine too. Yeah, Stewie's the best in the business. He is. He was just in New York ringing the, the bell there uh, on Wall Street. Like You don't just do that by accident. I'm watching him uh, on Facebook and closing deals, and people are smiling and making people happy. That's why he, Stewie's got to be your first phone call. Anything to do with purchasing a home, refinancing, uh, debt consolidation, talk to Stewie first. If you haven't talked to him first, talk to him second. Make sure you make sure you get another opinion and call Stewie. And it's pretty easy because he gives out his personal cell phone number. That number is 314-324-4440. Again, 314-324-4440. Call him, text him, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Doesn't matter. Holidays. Heck, I've seen him do it whenever, Anthony. But if you can't remember that number, what can they do? You can always Google the bag alone. NMLS number 226715.
101 ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The Cards lose to the Twins last night by a final score of five to three. They end up dropping two of three to Minnesota, but they're back in action tonight, taking on the Colorado Rockies. Adam Wainwright on the mound for the Redbirds, going for win number 199. First pitch is at 7:15. College football, Oregon and Washington set to join the Big Ten in 2024. We talked about that earlier today, how conference realignment is changing the game of college football. If you missed anything from today's show, make sure you go to 101ESPN.com or check out the 101 podcast or the 101 mobile app. You can find our full podcast and all of our interviews, including the one that we had today earlier with Matt Holiday. It's all brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. I'm Andrew Marsh, and the Sports Center update is driven by Johnny Londoff. Find new roads and shop 24-7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? Play narrative or reality here in the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. Jamie Rivers, Anthony Stalter. Here's Andrew Marsh. Gentlemen, narrative or reality? Jack Flaherty will become the ace we all thought he could be. However, with a different team. Yeah, that that is that is reality. What? That's reality. Assuming it's just a small sample size and it's just this year. I'll say yes, he becomes the ace of the Orioles this year. He starts game one for them, depending on, like, the schedule okay. and all that. We're getting a per- we're getting pretty loosey-goosey with the word ace around here, aren't we? Well, he'd be the ace for them. That's not what we asked. On ace. What's a traditional ace, like a 20-game winner? You know it when you see it. Yeah, it's usually there's one... Um, of hearts, diamonds, spades. No, Jamie, uh, that's oh, yeah, different. Yeah, there's usually no, no, no. four of them. It has though, an I A thought. right on it, so no. you know it's the ace. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. If you have to ask whether or not he's an ace, he's not. Mm. He's not an ace. Jeff Lee's not an ace. Like Max Scherzer's an ace. Justin Verlander's an ace. You find your guy. Like they, those are aces. He'll be a number one for the Orioles there moving forward. No, thank you. He won't be an ace for anybody. No, correct. That's the right answer. Congratulations. Okay. <laughs> Glad I found it, Jamie. Thank Thank you. you. Yeah, I knew you'd get there. (laughs) You're good like that. Narrative. You're good. You're a good worker. Thank you. You work away until you find that one, and then you do excellent. Yeah, I whittle away, Jamie. You're right. I didn't say that. Go ahead. I was just looking at Jamie, who was looking at something. Traffic was picking up outside. Are the geese back out there? No, no geese. Ah, darn. From the three one four. The Cards outfield log jam has has affected the offense this season, which resulted in losses. Uh, I didn't say a, that's, that's a narrative. Yeah, you're losing. You're a loser this year because you can't pitch. Was the outfield congestion a, an issue? Sure. I, I don't think it cost you games necessarily. Well, there's outfield congestion because guys weren't performing, too. Yeah. Like, the the starting three guys, had they performed consistently, you wouldn't have had to move Donovan and Edmund out there. And yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, breaking news, Utah and Arizona State have applied for formal membership in the Big 12. So the Big 12 is essentially going to be uh, the the remain, remaining teams outside of Texas and Oklahoma. And the rest of the Pac-12 that didn't defect. That's going to be the new Big 12. Sounds exciting. (laughs) Go ahead, Marsh. Narrative or reality, we have seen the last of Alvin Kamara as a premier running back in the NFL. Narrative. Narrative. He's going to be suspended for three games. They'll get him back. It's a good team. Can you guys remind me what he did? He went to Vegas the week of the Pro Bowl. And apparently knocked some dude out. Mm. Got into some fisticuffs. Okay. Got so suspended three games so for it. Three games for winning a fight? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. 
But no, he's not done. I don't know the details, honestly. I have no idea. I, could, I mean, maybe he walked up and suckered a guy. Yeah. You know, uh, whatever. I actually don't know the details either, outside of the Marshall, fact that he was in Vegas, got in a fight. And he just punched a guy. Probably shouldn't have been standing there, but he did that. And But was he defending himself? I don't think so. I don't so. know. I don't think I don't so. Think so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think he just punched I just, him. Yeah. Just, before I suspend a player, I'd like to have all the details. I, I'm sure the NFL had all the details yeah. and decided that oh, he... Oh, yeah. They definitely dropped the I's and crossed the T's over there at the NFL. Well, I mean, it, I, yeah, it's, it's been, been a, a while. year to yeah. figure it out. He played last year. It happened mm-hmm. before oh. last season. What's the statute of limitations? I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Jamie's in full lawyer mode here on um, yeah. Freedom oh, yeah. Friday. Been dealing with a lot of that lately. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I ask that, though, is because Jamal Williams is their other running back who was one of the best running backs in the, in the league last year, touchdown-wise. Right. There you go. For your fantasy team, he was. Well, he wasn't on my fantasy team. You wish he was. I wish he was on my led fantasy the team. And t- TDs, which I think is what you're saying. But yes. I don't think he was a great back. Look, just because he played for the Lions I last year. I mean, if you're year, getting in the can't... end zone. <laughs> yes. You're right. Alvin Kamara was not getting in the end zone. And I could tell you that hey, because he, the field constantly. he actually was on my fantasy football team. the field. He had one good game. He had like three touchdowns. Actually, he might have had four. He had a lot on his mind. He was Other wondering that, how long he, he's he going to get suspended. It's hard to get in the end zone when you're taking him off the field. It's true. you got to be on the field to, to score, Marsh. I understand that. Ch- tell him, Jamie. Why was he not on the field? Well, he was There's healthy a lot of reasons for last that. year. There's a lot of reasons why he didn't score. A lot of reasons why he wasn't on the field. Is it because okay? Taysom Hill was the quarterback at yeah. one point? Well, Taysom Hill. He doesn't like to share the ball. Taysom Hill is the biggest weapon in the National Football League, and it's time for you to realize that, both of you. When did you first realize it, Anthony? Right now. Yeah. Right this second. It's a big weapon. His yep. favorite team is the Saints now. Oh, he totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And buy you some, some gear. Why is it that any time I offer a positive... Division. Hey, can I ask you guys something? <laughs> if I go negative, you guys start talking about how negative I am. If I talk about a team positively, <laughs> you turn it into a negative that I like that team. No, well, it's not it's not that you talk about a team positively. It's literally like you're getting a tattoo of that team. Like you just like every day you just keep pounding and pounding and pounding. Like if I got to hear one more time about the Saints, I mean uncle fine, I'll be a, a Saints fan. Says the guy that can't wait to watch Dan Campbell just coach <laughs> all year. You don't even care about the Lions. You just want to You just want to watch Dan Campbell. His favorite animal at the free zoo here in St. Louis is the lion. Is Rory the lion? Yes. <laughs> yes, it should be. Loves Rory. I do. What a name. <laughs> uh, narrative or reality, if the Angels miss the postseason, it will be the biggest blunder in sports history. Oh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. It already is. That is, that is reality. Is <laughs> hanging on to Shohei Otani. Trying to load up, are you? Okay. You going to make a run, are you? Yeah, with right. Shohei? We're really going to go you for You going to show him that you yeah. can compete yeah. this gonna year? You're going to run him right out of the building. <laughs> the dang guy was in tears in the dugout last night when they lost again. Well, he had cramps. No, that was a couple of games before that. He had him last night, too. He did? <laughs> yes. He's got to eat more bananas, he, man. He was. <laughs> I think he was eating a banana last night. How much is he drinking every night? I don't know. That's how much he hates being in with the yeah, Angels. You're right. Exactly. He's drinking so much. He's like, I've I've got to, I got to get through this. I, yeah. I'm, he's self-medicating. Like, this is awful. I'm just going to start drinking every night. We get a couple text messages. Uh, one from Thanks Dad talking about your... New Orleans Saints. Uh, That's the Jeep band Wagoneer talking. I find that funny because I was driving behind one earlier today, and it reminded me of the Jeep Wagoneer. Yeah, the Wagoneer, the band Wagoneer. Oh, come on. Did this say? Okay, so who who do you guys have to win the NFC South? The what? The NFC South? Yeah. The NFC South. I have the New Orleans Saints. There you go. Okay. (laughs) I have no choice but to pick the Saints or I'm going to get yelled at. Oh, stop it. I see right now you're, he's already puffed up, like ready to pounce. If I say, if I said, oh, oh, it's the Buccaneers or how about the Falcons? You really have changed. Well, the Falcons are a wild card team. Wow. They are a wild card team. They're Uh, a legit wild card team. Just because you guys can't see it doesn't mean it's not true. Okay. I'll root for him. 
No, you won't. No, I won't, actually. We have a bet, or not a bet, but we have a an agreement. An agreement. Yeah. Going. That challenge. Uh, a waffles. challenge. A it's Waffle House challenge. Waffle House, House challenge. Yes. Uh, Friendly challenge. From 314, keep pounding, question mark. That's the Panthers thing. Are you a fan of them now, too? Mm, yeah, well, no, Anthony can't have. Well, I guess he does have two three teams. Three teams division. in the same division. My goodness. <laughs> have you no shame? Are they keep pounding? Why would they have keep pounding if they're a panther? Would well, keep clawing? I, I mean, that'd be an easier one. Depends on the panther. <laughs> I guess you could do both. Do a little bit of both. It's true. Hmm. Panthers are apparently a lot smaller. What? They're smaller cats. Uh, have you ever seen a panther? For real? I mean, it could rip your face off. Don't get me wrong. But it, but they're a... Smaller is yeah, relative, though. This thing mm. is still the size of, okay. like... But, like, pan- I, I would think of a panther almost like in the big cat category, like tiger, lion. They're not. No, they're, they're not. smaller. They're smaller. It's like, jag- like jaguars are smaller, too, aren't they? Yes. They yeah. have the. But they possess the strongest bite. Mm. Do they? Yeah. Okay. I like that. There's a uh, documentary about a panther. It's actually pink. It's a pink oh. panther. And they had a whole series of those. Yeah. yeah and then he. It, what, what was weird, though, is mm. that eventually he got into installation. Mm. Insulation. Insulation, excuse yeah. me. Not it, he installed insulation. insulation. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those crazy. wacky things where he just decided to you know, start a business. Yeah. Right. Then he was making sure the people's houses stayed warm. <laughs> yeah, <good laughs> just doing his due diligence, Anthony. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. It's crazy what those Panthers will do. No doubt. Are we done with narrative I or reality? I prefer Cougars. Yeah, we can't be. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> what? <laughs> South Dakota. They're taking on Mizzou. Ah. <laughs> the Cougars, right? Yeah. Yep. Which free agent I'm not a big Mizzou fan. <laughs> starters make the most sense for the Cardinals? You'll hear what Eno Saris told uh, BK and Ferrari about that very subject next on 101 ESPN. Let's be real. Mopping is a hat.
Um, you know, the Cardinals bullpen has actually, I think, been one of their strengths recently. So that's not impossible for them to do, but it's, it's, it's part of the package. So, you know, he will cost less, a lot less than Aaron Nola, though. I would, I would assume, and it, and you might be able to uh, get one of those uh, Kevin Gossman, Robbie Ray deals where it's like five years and a hundred something, as opposed to uh, I wonder if Nolan's going to try and get six and a little bit more. All right, that was Eno Saris earlier today on BK and Ferrario talking about the two pitchers that we have highlighted the most, who we'd love to see. Outside of Shohei Otani, of course, the Cardinals target this offseason, Aaron Nola and Blake Snell. With Jamie Rivers, I'm Anthony Stalter, Andrew Marsh. It's Fastlane on 101 ESPN. I would love to see the Cardinals get one of those two guys. Then you would have a bona fide ace, and then you can slide everybody else in and say, okay, do you feel comfortable with Miles Michaelis as a number two? Sure. Steven Matz is a number four. Sure. You still you would still need to probably trade for somebody or sign somebody else. And as I mentioned earlier, Jamie, I would sign three pitchers this offseason. It's not my money, of course. It's much easier for me to say that. But I think it's there's going to be two. What's up? It's way more fun. Oh, yeah. No it's doubt. My money? Yeah. Spend it, all. Spend it. But when it comes to the Cardinals and their approach, I think what Brad said was it, BT was is probably accurate. They'll probably sign one guy, trade trade for another, and then give that last spot to a youngster that shows up in spring training. That's not the way I would do it. I would get three bona fide guys and leave the rest in the minors, and if somebody flashes in spring training, then I can I can make a decision at that point. Maybe that person starts in the bullpen, which also needs a lot of work. And I don't think signing relievers is often a good idea. Reliever contracts, especially big money ones, usually blow up in teams' faces. And bullpens are so volatile from year to year that I would rely on young guys to supplement the bullpen with with what else you have. Helsley, Gallegos, those type of guys. That's my thoughts. Would you, Jamie, sign three veteran starters? Sign? Sign or trade. Let's say that. Yeah, I'm not going to the season without it. There's no question. Absolutely no doubt in my mind that I'm not just going there with, to get two. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get an extra one just in case. And to your point. It's not going to be Verhagen. N- no, it's going to be somebody. Or a Verhagen who, type. No, no, it's going to be an established guy. Even if it's an established number five guy, I yeah. don't care. It's going to be somebody you can pitch. Yes, that you can tap him on the shoulder and run him out there every five days. And my thought with the young guys is, <clears throat> let them fight it out, for one thing. Uh, two, if you see the guys that maybe profile a little bit better out of the bullpen, mm-hmm. put them there. Doesn't mean you can't stretch them out again in the offseason. It does not. I mean, Adam Wainwright started in the bullpen. Mm-hmm. He seemed to do okay for himself over the course of his career. Eh. I think he got stretched out just fine after that, Anthony. <laughs> you see my point, though? I would say so. Like, yeah. these young guys... could. One of them could be a Wainwright, where he starts in the bullpen, ends up having a real amazing career. I mean, they, some of these guys project to be pretty damn good pitchers. So why not do that? And then the guys who are, like, right there, maybe they didn't win the competition, back to Memphis. Who cares? Another half a season in Memphis. Like, as an organization, the player cares. He wanted to be in the majors and all that. But if I'm the organization, I would rather overcook the pitching prospect in the minors, then bring him up when he's not ready. Yeah, good call. Because if you're overcooking him, fine, he's dominating. Yeah. Oh, great. You run him out every five games, he's the best guy in the league. I know. He'll be awesome for us next year. Or he'll be awesome for us after the if trade deadline injury. or right. the all-star game mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Yeah. Good. That's what you want. You want guys that play their way out of the minors. Right. Not just slightly either. The best, best, best case scenario for a franchise of any pro sports that deals with minor leagues, so let's say hockey and baseball, let's use them because they're the most, it's the most recent, some up and down transaction. Yeah. The best case scenario is when you have players that are so good that they shouldn't be in the minors. Mm-hmm. And you Now you can bring them up. If you have several of those players, that means that one, if they're in the minors because your roster at the major league level is performing well, 
that you're winning games and you don't require their services. Yeah. So that's good news for you. Yeah. Two, if you need them, they're there. Right. So that's the best look case Look at Mason win. To your point, look, look at Mason win. Mm-hmm. We're all like, hey, when are you bringing up Mason win? What more can this guy do? It's a perfect scenario. So in two weeks or whenever you, you know, manipulate the game schedule and all that crap, great. Mason Wynn's going to come up. I think what Brad said, August 18th, 19th, one of those days is where you can. He's absolutely coming up. Yeah. He's, he's shown nothing else, yeah. nothing more. Don't put yourself, and I'm just going to use this player as an example. I don't, I, this isn't a shot. But look at what, you, what you're doing with Libertor. Last year you needed him because he had injuries. He wasn't ready. He didn't really impress. This year, you brought him up because he did have a good April in AAA, and Matt stunk. He had a good spring training and a good April in AAA. So he 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 didn't exactly prove I got play nothing his way out left. Of the league. No, and I got nothing left to show in AAA, but because Matt's stunk early on, you moved him to the bullpen. You brought him. Ah, stop trying to catch lightning in a bottle. Assure yourself a little bit more than you have over the last couple of years when it comes to your pitching staff. Yeah. God forbid, too, by the way, you got a reliever. There's always a reliever that's struggling. There's always a reliever that every time he comes in, he walks the house and gives up a home run. God forbid you bring up one of these young guys next year because they've dominated AAA. You don't have a spot for him in the rotation, but you put him in the bullpen. Well, he can't stretch him out. Send him back down to Memphis to have him stretch out for two weeks if that's the case, mm. if you need him to. But if he has showed a lot in AAA and you got a spot in a bullpen where you, could, where you can replace an underperformer, then do that. And now he's up at the big league level getting big league coaching, sitting it, it, between big leaguers that can help him through a game, and you develop him a little bit too. I don't think the big leagues are, are, are largely a developmental league. For younger guys that proved enough in AAA, I think they can be. Well, because there's always development. Sure. So even though the kid played his way out of AAA because he's too good, the next level is always harder. So he's, yeah. there's automatic development that happens anyways. Right. So I, I don't see any reason to take a, a guy that's not ready for the majors and put him in the majors and say, well, he'll catch up. Mm-hmm. Well, no, he probably won't. No, he probably won't. He's going to be drowning. He's going to be, yeah, yeah, he's going to be. And everybody's going to blame him. And they're going to, and he's, his confidence is going to get shattered. And that, that's how you ruin good players. Mm-hmm. Players that don't ever make it back from that stuff. So if you're the Cardinals, the offseason, you're going to get three veteran starters. You're letting the young guys fight it out. And the guys who pitch well but don't quite fall into your rotation, maybe you give them a little look in the bullpen. And then you go maybe grab a veteran or two for the bullpen that don't cost you a lot of money that can come in and help. Yeah. And you go from there. There you go. Jamie Rivers, Anthony Stalter. What's trending is next in the fast lane on 101 ESPN.
What's trending in the world of sports? The Fast Lane has you covered. What's trending now? Brought to you by Goodwill. Donate to Goodwill and get a half price Cardinals ticket voucher. Welcome back to the Fast Lane here on 101 ESPN. Anthony Stalter, Jamie Rivers, I'm Andrew Marsh, and it's time for What's Trending. Guys, Adam Wainwright takes the mound tonight for the cards, going up against the Colorado Rockies, and he's looking for win number 199. Yeah. Do you think tonight goes Wayno's yes. way, or do you think we will see another good performance and a bullpen blow a victory? I don't think the bullpen's going to blow pass. anything tonight. I think the Cardinals win, and I think Adam Wainwright collects W, number 199. Absolutely. This guy's locked in. Yeah, I think so. Plus, it's the Rockies. That's kind of where my head's at. There we go. Yep. uh, There it is. Yeah. I hope so, man. Like, the the season's whittling away here for Waino. He's got to, like, come on. He's got to get, what, five innings in, right? To get the win? Mm-hmm. Yeah. To qualify for the win? Correct. He's got to get through five. I know. Come on, Wayno. Do you he think will. that's why they had half the team sitting out yesterday? Absolutely. You got to rest up. Make sure you're ready to go for tonight's game. You're going to need some Rockies. run support. You're going to need some run support. They've given him a lot of run support in the past. He's I don't know why the guys in the bullpen don't like him, though. That's weird. It's a shame. It, is it weird. really is. They yeah. need different guys in there, then. Yeah. Guys, the guys that like Wayna. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, he will. Yeah, 199. I hope so. Mark it. So now the more I think about it, I don't, I don't want to say it makes sense why all these players had yesterday off. And now they're playing tonight mm-hmm. for that for that offense. Well, yeah, I mean, you guys complained that Motter was in there in the oh. in the ninth inning. You, you know, send Contreras up or send Arnado. Why? Oh, so they get hit. I was at the game. So I they get hit see. in the knee oh, okay. and they're not Enough. available? Enough. They're not available for Wayno the next day? Enough. What do you guys have against Wayno in the I first think place? If they got hit in the knee, they would absolutely get off their feet. I don't have anything against Wayno. I mean, I, to me, it doesn't sound like it. Don't and be I, pulling I think this it's Uno reverse card really on, on us. unfortunate that you guys won't get on board for this guy to win two more games. Oh, Anthony, I've been on board for a long time. I ordered a jersey already. It doesn't have Wayno 50. It has Wayno 200 on the back. Wow. Mm. I'm committed to it. So if he doesn't end up getting 200, we know who to blame. Well, what's going to piss me off is if you get, like, 201. <laughs> <laughs> Stop exactly at 200, wait, wait, no. Get to 200 and just kick the feet and up. And okay? neutral. Let, let the kids play. Yeah. I did see Jamie at the local embroidery shop getting his Albert Bull 700 jersey, and yeah. he had to take the zero off and put a three on it. Yeah, yep. Albert did it to me last year. He was ticked, too. Wayne, I was going to do it to me this year. That poor yeah. shop yeah, owner. That poor shop owner felt Can't Jamie's presence that, yeah. that day because Jamie just, he started ripping things off the wall. Mm-hmm. It's uh, not true, Anthony. He not said, I used to do this when I was younger. Let me show you how to do it. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, the embroidery? Yeah, yeah. He, worked, he was working the press. I can work those machines, baby. Before you know it, customers were coming in, yeah. and Jamie goes, all right, what, what, what do you need? Yeah. Come on yeah. Come on, come on, on it. it. I, I got Next you. thing I you know, this. the Great Britain World Baseball Classic <laughs> team is they're getting their jerseys ready three years in advance. And That's right. They were happy, okay? <laughs> when they left that day, they were happy. Oh, boy. Uh, One of the other big news today is that Oregon and Washington are set to join the Big Ten. We talked about college football realignment. We did have a question come to the Air Comfort Service text line, 314-399-9646. They wanted to know, this listener, who you have in your early top four. Oh, wow. Who's winning the national championship? I mean, Georgia's going to be in there again. Alabama's going to be in there again. Uh, again? They weren't even at this year. Well, but Alabama. Past year. I, I mean, come on. The Alabama's, Alabama's always, always sniffing around the top. Yeah, they are. Um... Boy, oh boy. I I'm always I'm always skeptical of teams like Oklahoma. I don't know if Oklahoma's got it this year. The team the team that everybody's gotta watch for is USC. Interesting. USC, that offense, Caleb Williams. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they win 
don't know if they win big, but I think USC can make a deep run this year. What about so USC, Michigan? Georgia? Um, They've been in it two yeah. times in the, two times in a row now. Yep. Good team, not great. Boys, I can't believe we're not talking about Mizzou at this point. Quite honestly, we could. We've talked a lot of Cardinals baseball. I think a lot of people on the text line probably want us to talk some Mizzou football. Where do you got Mizzou in your top four? Top four in the country? Yeah. I got him at five. I got him at second. You can't expect miracles. (laughs) (laughs) I think the, uh, what's the over under? Six and a half on wins for them. Mm -hmm. I actually think I would take the over. I feel, I, they got a tough schedule, but I feel like that's a number. I th- I, I just have a feeling they get to seven. I think they're going to disappoint every Mizzou Why? fan again. <laughs> again. Who the hell is who, who the hell is going to be their quarterback at the end of the I year? I feel like this is it, it is the same conversation every year with Mizzou. Yeah. And the fans start to get a little excited, and then halfway through the year, what do we hear? Why did I believe in this team? Why did I think this year was going to be any different? I'm sorry. There's, there are no New Orleans Saints. You mean you're not rooting for them? No, they're just Saints are awesome. Wow. Uh, so the Untold Document documentary series on uh, Netflix is out, and the Jake Paul episode has been released. Jamie's guy. Jamie's guy. Jamie loves Jake Paul. Loves to watch him fight. Loves his... Business acumen. I actually don't hate his business him. acumen. Have you have you guys watched the new? No, it's called the Problem Child. I think that's mm-hmm. the name of it. No, I do want to see it though. I watched it the other night. I, I, it's it's awesome. There's it's good. more to these guys than what they portray. Like him and his brother. Mm-hmm. Like they're annoying as hell. Don't get me wrong, but they've done it by design. Yeah, they want the world to hate them. But the problem is half the. Like, all the YouTube subscribers that they have for love them. Like, just buy into the all, like, it's crazy. So I am very curious to watch this and find out, you know, how they built their image, how they built the empire, what they, when they decided to be a certain way. And, and now in the boxing world, like, he's not, a, he's not a real boxer, but he's made noise enough. And what he's really made noise on is getting guys paid. Yeah. And now that's leaking over to the UFC where fighters are sitting there digging their heels and going, well, look at this guy over here making, you know, 10 million for a fight and I made yeah. 200,000. Yeah. Like, so he's pushing the limits all the time. No matter what he's doing, he's pushing the limits. And so I'm curious to dive, to dive into his brain and kind of figure it out. I'm always intrigued by that. People who are successful intrigue me. How did they, how did they become successful? People who are successful because they worked to get there. Mm. If, you know, little Timmy is handed the oil mm. company because dad is <laughs> like, that doesn't necessarily intrigue me. Right. But the guy who's like a self-made guy who became something, made decisions here, like tough decisions in business, and that intrigues me. How do you get from zero to 100? I want to know that. Yeah. What if the person like made a movie and got famous? It's still an entrepreneur. It's a decision that they made at that point to make a movie and then release it. And I know where you're headed with it. Mm-hmm. That person's mm-hmm. done pretty well for themselves. Oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah. So what they do, it was a very conscious decision, too, apparently, that even the mom knew about the movie mm-hmm. and released the movie. And then on the backside of that, pun intended, uh, built an empire. Interesting. All true. You guys haven't said the name of the movie, but I have seen that movie. Oh, uh, there's a couple of them out there. Yeah. Different there's people. a few movies I haven't seen that you guys recommend, but I, I've definitely seen that one. Yeah. That's um, surprising. The reason why... You guys are talking, <laughs> about, you guys are talking about Mighty Ducks, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Gordon, Gordon, Gordon Bombay. Bombay. Mighty something. Uh, but, no, great. I watched it the other day. It's great. The Johnny Football one is next, and that comes out August 8th, so uh, next week. What do you guys... When you do watch these, what do you want to see and know about Johnny Football and that whole saga? Well, did you hear today? Yeah, that he went on like some I don't I, I don't I don't want to quote how many millions, but mm-hmm. went on this complete I don't know 16 16 and a half million or 17 million dollar 
binge. Yeah, it was like a big bender. Yeah, big bender. Thought of, you know, thought about committing suicide mm-hmm. after Cleveland had released him. Uh, Johnny Manziel's got an interesting, interesting history. Yeah, you know, an interesting upbringing. So his, his parents were very wealthy. Didn't necessarily need football. Obviously, gets to Texas A&M. Has all the success at Texas A&M, but. Anybody would tell you that who, who you know individual coaches that would work for him, you know, he kind of surrounded himself with people that may have not had his best interests at heart. I remember reading the book. I think it was I think it was co- the making of a quarterback by Bruce Feldman. In that book, is that was, Scott's brother? No, no, Corey's brother. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's not actually. <laughs> In that book, they talked about how Johnny Manziel showed up one time for a personal workout with the quarterback coach. He was late. Then he showed up with an entourage, and the coach, who had a bunch of wide receivers running routes and things like that for Manziel, had a water cooler full of water and all that stuff for the receivers who were working out that day. Well, Manziel's entourage drank all the water. Oh, my god! Manziel didn't say anything, got in kind of a spat. He never really worked worked hard at, at learning the playbook. He just kind of relied on his ability. Then he gets to Cleveland. The Browns kind of realize that. They try to help him out. He still didn't, never really worked hard. Just had an unbelievable kind of two seasons at, at Texas A&M where he ran around like a, a, a maniac and threw the ball up to Mike Evans. I mean, yeah. really. That's how that's I mean, everyone remembers the run against Alabama. That's what he was somewhat certain, trademarked for. Certainly. And of course, you know, the, the money sign Absolutely. and all this stuff. But this is somebody who never worked hard. So I'm interested, I guess, in, in watching this and see seeing, okay, is there a humility aspect to it? I mean, anybody, you're, you know, you got, you, you're thinking about taking your own life when you've got money and all that stuff. Obviously, you're very deeply unhappy. So I, I wonder if there was kind of a humility aspect to it. I got released. I didn't think, I, you know. I didn't do X, Y, and Z. Does he turn it into a positive? So that would kind of be something that I'd be interested in. All right, that's what's trending here in the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. How can the Cardinals keep the veterans engaged the rest of the season? Jimmy asked this of Matt Holiday earlier, specifically with Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt. We'll dive into that next on 101 ESPN.
more importantly, I think, keep the veteran guys engaged. Arenado and Goldschmidt are such pros pros. They didn't expect to have a kind of year like this. I think how they approach these final 50-odd games or so is going to be really, really important, and I expect nothing but true professionalism from the two of them because uh, when you have a down year, you need your leaders to lead, and I know that they're going to do that. So those are things that, that I personally will look forward to watching. That was Chip Carey. Opening drive earlier today talking about once a day, Jamie, I hit this mic just ever so, and it <laughs> gets caught on my big get, nose. Yeah, at least you got the stopper, though. Yeah, exactly. It's good. Unbelievable. Um, <laughs> anyways, yeah, Chip Carey on the opening drive talking about <laughs> engaging with the veterans. They're keeping the, the, uh, the veterans engaged. It was a question you also asked Matt Holiday earlier today who joined us here in the fast lane. Here's what Matt Holiday said, because, of course, Matt has played on teams that have been out of it. How, how do you keep guys like Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt engaged when you're not playing for anything? Yeah, I mean, you're talking about two very prideful pros. And so you're talking about guys that take a lot of pride in, in their personal performance, their impact on the team, a chance to mentor younger players. So I, I think that while there there may be a little bit of a sense of, you know, this is frustrating that that we're already sort of throwing in the in the white towel this early, I think you're talking about two absolute stud humans, stud teammates, like professionals that take a ton of pride in their routine and going out on the field and playing at the highest level. They take it home with them when they don't have a good game, no matter if, you know what the circumstances around them is. So I, I, I don't worry about those guys. Like I, like I said, I, I'm sure that it was a little bit of a punch in the gut to sort of realize that maybe this season is, is kind of out the window. and, and uh, But – there is a, a, a professionalism, Jamie, as you know, that, that you, you take that field. Like, if you're not all in and, and, and emotionally invested in, in that game, uh, it'll embarrass you. I mean, there's, there's, this is the, the, the top of the top. And if you're not locked in, uh, these guys are too prideful to get embarrassed. So I'm not really worried about much of a drop off from a, you know, an effort or an emotional, you know, sort of engagement with them. So, Jamie. Same question to you. I know, yeah. you know, it, hockey, hockey's physical. So I, maybe it's, it's not as difficult to stay in it. And, and let's start here. I, Cause I'm sure we'll get the text. I realize these guys are making good money. Not all of them are making Arnado and Goldschmidt money, but they're, they you know, a lot of guys are making good money. They do have professional pride. Chip Carey said it as did Matt holiday. We know that they've got personal pride. Okay. But this is a losing season. They're human beings. It'd be a little easy to, you know, not go through the daily grind as much as as much as much you would if you were winning every day, you know, or you're a contender. Uh, so let's just get that out of the way first. Let's also make this very clear. Yeah. Yes, they're making a ton of money. A ton of money. Guess what they're used to? Being rich. Right. They're used to it. Yeah. So they don't look at the checkbook every Good two point. weeks and go, oh, I'm just thankful that I'm making lots of money. No, because it's the normal for them. Right. And that might piss you off right now as a listener. It might. Yeah. But they their, earned it. Their millions of dollars is normal to them. Yeah. Losing isn't. Right. Well said. So, Jamie, as a, per, as a former professional, how, how difficult is it to stay engaged to go through the routine every single day, treat, treatment of your body, stay, staying engaged for some of the young guys who are, you know, full of you know what and vinegar. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it when you're a veteran player? Well, it's not easy. I went through it a couple of times in my career. The very first time I went through it, I was with the New York Islanders. and But we were a young team. I think it was only my fourth or fifth year in the NHL. I was regarded as a veteran type guy. We had a young team. So the energy level kind of stays there because everybody's happy to be in the league and everybody's happy to be making that money. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's still got monotonous at times. You're sitting there and you've lost three or four in a row and it's like, ugh, body's aching. <laughs> it took a puck in the face or a punch in the face or a puck in the back of the leg or mm, whatever it is like for what and they all seem to hurt more because they're not meaningful games so that was difficult but it was different because i was younger i went through it again with the uh arizona coyotes later in my career that was difficult it was difficult because 
you go into the most games and you're like, Ugh. to play in the young guys. I get it. I know why. We're going to lose anyways. This pisses me off. But I always found myself to try and reset. Like I, even though I would get those thoughts, I'd try to reset. Like the moment I walked into the rink, for me, no matter what I was thinking before, yeah. The moment I walked in, it was like go time. Kind of compartmentalize. Yeah, it's go time. What you need to do. I'm here to do my damn job. Yeah. I'm here to do my job, and I'm here to to prove that I'm a good player, and to show these young guys what it's supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. And and even though that was the maybe the hardest stretch of hockey for me, it was the best stretch over the course of my career. It might be the best 20 games I ever played. I was laying it on the line. You know, blocking six, I said record that year, 11 block shots in one game. Uh, and the young guys are like looking around like, why the hell is this guy doing this stuff? Even some of the veteran guys, remember Mike Ricci, who's like, hey, dude, you know we're not making the playoffs, right? I'm like, yeah, but this is just how I roll. We're playing. Like, this is how right. I roll. Yeah. And so that's how I got through it was to actually work and play harder. Mm -hmm. And I didn't focus on the result. Meaning the final score. Yeah. I focused on the result of my play. And I would isolate one thing per game that I wanted to do really good. So if it was, you know, passing, how many times I hit the tape? Like, and I'd go back and I know oh, I had 20 passes today, 18 of them hit the tape. Oh, yeah, that's good. Let's see if we can do better next time. Yeah. If I get shots on goal, how many times did I hit the net? Did I get shots blocked? How many hits did I have out there? How many block shots did I have? Goals and assists, they didn't come very often for me, but those were just bonuses. But you isolate something every game to do well. And that's how I got through it, was you know kind of bringing it to an individual thing within the team game. Do you think that your performance got better, too, because you weren't focused on the results? Your individual performance got better because you weren't measuring wins and losses? Yeah. I don't know if it got better because of that. Like, do you think you had a better season because you weren't so focused on yeah. whether or not your team won or lost, which is a very black and white. We either won or yeah. we lost. We either did well or we didn't. I don't know if I, I don't know if that affected me at all, but I think the flip side of it, the positive side, was that I was focused more on smaller details within the game. And so, therefore, my overall game was better. Still wanting to win every single game. Sure. But losing the games would frustrate me only when we had a chance to win. If we were out there playing against whomever, like the Detroit Red Wings, and we got fleeced 6-1, to one, I can't sit there and wear the 6-1. to one. Like mm. We're just not a good team. Right. They're, they're a great team. But what I can do is if the, if the fourth goal – of the game was my fault because I made a mistake. I need to be better. That's something I can take a look at. Or if I had, you know, five or six block shots, four shots on goal, some successful passes, maybe a couple of big hits. Now I look at the game differently and I go, okay, these categories I did well in. Mm -hmm. The overall score, I can't help that. I can't score all the goals. I can't be the goalie. You can't do everything out here. So I found that my game got better by you know, kind of isolating personal things that I could accomplish within the grand scheme of the game. Sure. So I find that to be very relevant when it comes to baseball, quite honestly. So if I'm Goldie or I'm Arenado or any of the veteran guys who are looking at the game and they're going to lose again, but what can you do? You know, how about no more errors at third base for Nolan Arenado? I'm just, I'm nitpicking right yeah, now. Yeah, but... How about, just... you know, how about uh, whatever it is, going two for four, Anything you can isolate within the game, because baseball is an individual sport within a team game. It's a pitcher versus hitter, and you have two teams out there. Yeah. So I feel I feel like baseball is something that you could really dial in. What's the exit velo on the ones that I'm hitting? What's my launch angle? You know, like if it's something you want to improve, I think that that's what you can do. For me, it really helped me. Yeah. That's awesome. Jamie Rivers, Anthony Stolzer, it's a fast line on 101 ESPN. We do need a new Beat the Streak contestant. So if you want to play Beat the Streak, we're going to do that in a couple of minutes. Just text in BTS, BTS to 314-399-9646. Or if you want to, 
you know, Texan streak or something like that. So if you want to play Beat the Streak, great. We need a new contestant, 314-399-9646. That's our Air Comfort Service text line. We'll do Beat the Streak and Biggest Question of the Day next on 101 ESPN.
101 ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. The Cards lose to the Twins last night by a final score of 5 to 3. They drop 2 of 3 against Minnesota. Tonight they go up against the Colorado Rockies. Adam Wainwright on the mound looking for win number 199. 715 first pitch between the Cards and the Rockies. If you missed anything from today's show, including our interview with Matt Holiday, make sure you go to 101ESPN.com or check out the 101 mobile app. You can find the full show there. It's all brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. We have our Beat the Streak and Biggest Question of the Day coming up next. I'm Andrew Marsh, and this Sports Center update is brought to you by Silly Gas. Heating and cooling. An independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. Baseballs. All of my successes depend on me. You ready to hit? The hits just keep on coming. And his first big league hit is a bullet up the middle. I can't believe that. <laughs> right before. What a. He turned on our mics. Marsh looks at Jamie and he goes, You had Goldschmidt yesterday, didn't you? In Beat the Streak. And Jamie just looks at him. <laughs> I, was, uh, I don't know if you had the glasses on or not. I, did. I think you did. Yeah, so you had the glasses on. He, he, lo- he looked at Marsh <laughs> over the glasses <laughs> and he goes, Yes. <laughs> that All was right. a real jerk move, Andrew. So uh, Right here on Freedom Friday. On you Freedom that Friday. Uh, you're going to drop something like that on Jamie's face. Yeah. I'm, about to, I'm about to drop yeah. something on your face, too, Anthony, oh. because you. Did not get a hit yesterday either. Newt, I'll tell you what, Newt took some of the worst at bats, not named Taylor Motter last night, I thought. There was one that was a cricket pitch. Yeah. It bounced like three feet before the play. I, <laughs> I think I can get this one. Has anybody really established a streak in a while? So, Jamie, I had the 13. You had, what, like 11? 10 or 11. 10 or 11. And then it has been That's it. Like 13 Marsh. is the highest. But even that, I, it, there's no six. There's no seven. Marsh, you had three. Like, three has been the highlight over the last week, I've I feel. I've been absolutely terrible this entire year. Well, you had I a started streak of six, really good. right? No, I think my highest is, let me check real quick. All right. I thought he got the six, too. Yeah. I don't know. My highest is seven, uh-huh. and it was at the beginning of the year. Oh. Well, so I missed with Brendan hot. Donovan, Marcy. and then he got he went in a slump because I jinxed him. Mm-hmm. And then That's I got true. seven guys in a row. <laughs> went seven in a row. Haven't done the same since. All right. Well, well hey, hey, we're going to be great today. Chase is our latest contestant for Beat the Streak. What's up, Chase? What's going on, guys? How are you guys doing? We're doing good. Thanks, man. Thanks for listening. Thanks for playing. Uh, I, I, You know what? Are, is Chase first? Did we all lose last night? Yesterday was the first time I, I believe we've done beat the streak. This will this will be our 62nd time doing it. It was the first I time. You'll be hearing a lot of my voice. All right, there we go. Chase I love the confidence. confidence. I like that. Last night was the first time we have all missed on beat the streak. All of wow. us did not get a hit. It's the first time. Well, because so, we loaded up on Cardinals like a bunch exactly of idiots. I, Sonny Gray. Sonny Gray's the guy you got to get. Then I'm like, let's go cards. <laughs> yeah, well, that's pretty stupid, really. Thanks, Jamie. Almost as dumb as Almost as dumb as not taking out with Burleson and going to the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Chase, you're, I, I don't know if this has ever, I know it hasn't. What? This has never happened. Chase, you are going to lead off. We did the very first one of the year, I think. Okay. We had okay, the, you're right. Uh, yeah. Andrew, Andrew uh, I believe he led off yesterday. No, it, yeah, but he had already got a hit yeah he oh, Ch- oh, okay. is got, just starting I, got his you, I got what you mean like this yeah. is unbelievable all right chase go for it but with a, a terrible righty on the mound that i have colorado rocky i'm gonna go with anthony strict from yesterday lars taylor touch doing new bar okay we'll probably lead off the game with a hit and piss me off but it'll be good for you <laughs> uh, all right chase Sounds good. So you got Newt. Now, Marsh, are you up next? I know it goes by longest streak after that, right? No, you would be up next. Oh, me. Okay. Yeah, because you had a, you got a hit with Newt Bar the night before. All right. I'm going to go with, I'm going to double dip. I'm going to go Jordan Walker. Jordan Walker to hit the home run. Jordan Walker to get a hit tonight. Uh, Give me the walk show. Walk it like it's hot. Okay. Now who, Marsh? 
Now it's me. And I'm going to go with Anthony's favorite player, Brendan Rodgers. Oh, wow. Brendan Rodgers. Aaron's Traitor. brother. What'd you say, Chase? He's a traitor. He is. I know. No, Chase is a traitor all season. <laughs> uh, but he's batting 333 against Wayne. Going against him? Yeah, he's batting 333. Hey, uh, Chase, I don't know if you listened earlier, but Jamie and Marsh had nothing good to say about uh, Adam Wainwright. They're rooting oh, against him. That is not true, Anthony. I said he's going to get 199 tonight. Yeah, that's what I heard. I was behind problem? Jamie at restaurants. I've heard him talking bad about Wainwright. Thank you, Chase. Thank you. Wow. You know, the guy's just, I mean, he's been awful to that guy. How come we haven't been invited to these restaurants? I don't know. We'll figure yeah. it out. It's good figure point. it out, Marsh. All right, Jamie, who do you got? Uh, I'm going with a big Willie Contreras. Okay. Okay, so we're all loaded up on Cardinals, except for you know who, Andrew Marsh. Mm-hmm. Chase, you have Lars Taylor, Tatsui, Newt Bar. I took Jordan Walker. Marsh, you took Brendan Rodgers. And Jamie, you have Wilson Contreras. Chase, I hope you have a good weekend, and I hope we're talking to you on Monday. You sure will be. I'll see you guys Monday. All right. Good yeah, man. Buddy, see you, man. A good one. All right. That was Chase for Beat the Streak. Week, you guys. You, too. you too. Thanks, man. All right. Time for biggest question of the day. It's time for the Fast Lane's biggest question of the day. All right, gentlemen. We had a mic drop come our way from Steve. And he has a question for you two. Hey, Steve. And this is Steve's question, the biggest question of the day. All right. Got a question, guys. Do you think that maybe uh, Cardinals front office has us backwards? What I mean is we, we never have any pitchers around here, any top-shelf pitchers, but we've always got a ton of surplus guys. We've even got two MVP candidates. So it seems to me that Mosellac wants to hold on to the Harrison Baders and the Dylan Carlsons and, you know, these type of cats, and then just think that he can do patchwork on the starting rotation. Shouldn't they be using, I mean, I don't care if you got to use Newbar, Donovan, Tyrone O'Neill, and somebody else in the package to get a Logan Gilbert type. Once you got two of those guys on your staff, that's what you can build around on. That, that's when you can start improving the defense and really have a shot at building a World Series contender. Uh, Steven, yeah, I do. I think you're right, but let's unpack it. Let's let's go a little further here. So this is my interpretation of things. I think that Mo is gun shy when it comes to trading off some of these position players, because not just that we always focus on what the Randy Rosarina deal, right? Mm. Uh, he, he's gun shy because he gave up Randy or Rosarina, or maybe he gave up uh, Adolis Garcia as well. I also think he's gun shy because at one point. Randall Gritchick and Stephen Biscotti were written in the middle of this lineup. There was a, there was a point in time where, he ha, where, where there was no position players coming up through the pipeline, and you were trying to patchwork it just like you are right now with the pitching staff. You're trying to patchwork the, the lineup that way. So I think there was a major organizational shift under Flores, right, Randy Flores, to bring in more high upside positional talent. Great. It has worked out. Nolan Gorman. Uh, Jordan Walker. Hopefully Mason Wynn. You got a couple of gems, too. Tommy Edmond. Mm-hmm. Brennan Donovan. So you develop these young guys through the organization. Now you got some high upside guys, right? But you've almost ignored the pitching staff. You've gone a little bit more. No, you haven't almost, Anthony. You have. Well, actually, you yeah. know what? Go ahead. Yeah, because you, you got Miles. My- you just gone a different route. So you, yeah, you went for Miles Michaelis, and you hit on Miles Michaelis. There's two years where he got injured, but for the most part, like Miles Michaelis He's has been really good. worked out. He's been good. So what do you do? Well, we can kind of do that. We don't need to spend on pitching. We can we can get a Drew Verhagen. Uh, we can go with a Stephen Matz. You know, we don't need to spend 150 million we can spend 44 million and they've gone that route i think that to steven's point they've tried to patchwork the pitching staff and it has blown up in their face but i think they've been reluctant to give up some of these positional players because that group was barren like seven years ago and then when you started giving up the Randy Rosarinas and the Dulles Garcias and all those guys, that hurt even worse. So I'll just keep them. 
in case they work out. And he gets his log jam and yeah. no pitching. That's my that's my interpretation of things. So Jamie. you're you're not wrong at all. Uh, I will add to it, and I've said this before on these very airwaves. You also missed in your evaluation of Dakota Hudson, Jake Woodford, and Matthew Libertor. Yes. Because yeah. those were the supposed to be the guys right now. Yep. In, like especially Woodford and Dakota Hudson, they're supposed to be in your rotation right now mm-hmm. as like two, three, or three, four. And they're not. Like Dakota Hudson is now, but so you're drafting those guys and it didn't work. Mm. So you went with the Miles Michaelis, the Steven Matz, all that stuff. But then you thought, hey, we have the answer because we drafted these pitchers pretty high. Yeah. So these guys will be in our rotation. They're, they're coming up. Yeah. And yeah. Alex Reyes. Alex Reyes, yeah. correct. All that stuff. And you know, even for quite honestly, for for a uh, another point to you, you also had Carlos Martinez that you thought was going to be. Yeah. A long-term fix oh, in point. that spot mm-hmm. and that didn't work out <laughs> so they've tried I don't think it's I don't think they've literally ignored pitching they've just misevaluated some of the young talent mm-hmm. I think that's problem too so now it looks like they're throwing numbers at the problem meaning yeah. let's if we get if we need two pitchers two young pitchers let's get ten yeah <laughs> and see, I don't I don't mind that don't approach either by but the people way. forget that they didn't just turn their back on pitching. Yeah. They just picked the wrong ones. Yeah, no, good call. And you and I did, remember when we did the Alex Petrangelo, like the seven degrees of Alex Petrangelo, and we broke down that, here's how it happened with the Blues. You and I did the same autopsy on the Cardinals pitching. Mm -hmm. We went all the way back to Jack Flaherty, and then went from there. Flaherty, Woodford, Hudson, made the trade for Libertor in 2019. You and I did the same thing. I can't remember when you got Alex Reyes. Carlos Martinez is a great point. Martinez at one point was pretty pretty damn good. He was great. He was like people projected him to be like. And then it just yeah. fell off a cliff. Jack Flaherty, man. Man, we got an ace finally. Everything's been dramatic with the pitching staff. And it gets you to the point where you're, you know, not you're now last in the NL Central. Okay. We have got Fader Follow, What You Missed, all coming up next on 101 ESPN. All right, where is it? I don't have it. As I do. Got it? Yeah. Anthony, Jamie, women's soccer is on the world stage, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's right. Right now, what FanDuel's doing for new customers is they get the no sweat first bet up to Mm $1,000. What that means is you get $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. All you have to do for that, Anthony, is go to FanDuel.com slash fast. And join right and, now. And while you're there, you can check out America's number one sports book, FanDuel. You can check them out because they got great player props, great team props. They've got the bonus bets going on all the time. They give you a way to bet on the action, whether it's pre-flop or live betting, and to do it in a safe, secure way with the safe, secure app that pays you instantly when you do win. BT, you got the rest.
It's time for FanDuel Fade or Follow on the Fast Lane. Brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make 